I was doing this big seminar for Wade Rome, Carter Laborio, Dean Thomas, and then this kid came up to me and he was like, hey, my name Mike Perry. I'm the one that's been talking shit about you on the internet. And he was like, but I'm gonna take your seminar today. Motherfucker do like that to me, I'm going like this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Especially yeah. against gay shit. Dude, yeah. what the fuck? So when I made that song, I beat your ass. The so story behind that song, it oh. was really for Dana, because I wanted uh, to beat his ass. What? It wasn't Tyron FC, it was UFC. And I needed to do what I needed to do to continue to grow, brand, make as much money in, uh, as I could. And then when I want to leave, now I can leave and do my own thing, but I got to buy by their roots and I didn't do that. But now it's me FC, so I do what the fuck I want to do, when I want to do it, how I want to do it, and that's the play. And welcome back to Overdogs Podcast. I'm in here with your boy Mac Malley right now. And we're back. Season two of the podcast, dog. We're here. And uh, big things happening this year. We're going to start it off right. I mean, first of all, our guest today, before we get to you, Mac, I, I just want to say I'm grateful to have our guest on today. I mean, he's in the big leagues, been in the big leagues, and... uh uh, you know, still looking for fights and moved on to high level broadcasting. You know, he's all over the game and, and he's reached levels that I've only attempted to get to. So Tyron Woodley's coming on today and I think it's very, um, it's a very good person that I, I'm, I'm humble to be able to get to speak with him and, Ask him, you know, where things go from here and how we level up from this moment. So, so what's up, Mac? What you been up to, man? Dude, uh, you know, same old. I think I probably, since we did a podcast last, um, I had to put on at least 10 pounds. And then I'm growing out the beard. You know, super exciting stuff over here. <laughs> but uh, let's, let's, I wanted to start this because, you know, you've been around... You know, you've talked, you've been on uh, Paul's podcast and everything, but where have you been, Mike? We kind of went from season one, and then we took a little hiatus, now we're back. How you doing? What's up with you? How's everything going now? You know, like, where were you at? How's your, uh, how's everything going with you, man? Give us a detailed rundown for everyone listening that mm. doesn't know. Details, huh? Um, well, I'm all right. I'm pretty good, man. You know, I'm just trying to uh, figure things out, um, you know, really focusing on family a lot. And, uh, you know, it's just been the off season, just been waiting, thinking a lot, got to, got to soak it all in and then figure out, uh, what, you know, that's why I'm grateful to talk to T Woodley today, see what other options that I may have myself as far as, you know, leveling up and, and, uh, you know, been on business ventures and, and, uh, doing, doing things outside of competition, um, and, um, you know, just living life uh, best I could, you know, saw some family, traveled a little bit, went to Dallas, saw a future concert. That was cool. Um, and now I'm back to building, man. I got to get myself back right. Uh, I haven't really worked out much. But what's that like? Do you not work out much? <laughs> <laughs> I do. Fuck no. Yeah. Um. I should. I do beer curls all day. Yeah. I need to get in shape for real, Mike. Like you guys are gonna have to bully me this season, get my ass in shape because I'm capable of it. I'm athletic, but shit. I have. I don't think. How often do you not train? Because you're always fucking training. So how often? How many times would you say you've, you know, just stopped training for a little bit, took a little break? Um. You know, I try to be. You usually don't. I have try to, to be as lazy as I can. Uh. Yeah. But like. You know, I try to I try to put my time. I need to pick it up more, and we need to do more family activities. Or it's hard to get both kids out of the house, things like that. Um, you know, we we spend hours just getting ourselves ready and the kids ready, and then once we get in the car, we're like already half tired. So then once we get out there, and then the, the kids are gonna have to eat in no time, and stopping to get them food, and then. Uh, you know, if we want to do any activities in between, we probably even shopping, we got to get babysitters and be like, you know what, can you just watch kids for an hour or two? We got a couple errands we have to run. Um, sometimes try to take the kids with us on the errands, get them out of the house. 
you know, pretty boring stuff, but uh, it's fun and exciting watching the kids grow and things like that. And, um, you know, I don't really have any business ventures really. Like I, I was trying, I'm still trying to get into real estate. Uh, we were okay. looking at some things, some duplexes and, and a couple of those weren't working out, but we're still looking into more and, uh, just trying to level up and, and see what else is out there for me. I mean, I definitely want to take another stab at the podcast world and, and see how I can definitely make this better, uh, interact with fans some more. And, and I got a couple, uh, sponsors that I'll be working with. Uh, you know, just doing videos and, and, um, posting for content or, or, um, you know, a little bit of sales pitch, you know, buy this product, get that product or check out these clothes, things like that. You know, just trying to keep myself active. I mean, you've always been good at that. So it sounds like you're not really, <clears throat> you're not, you might not be training actively, but you're still doing shit. You're always growing. And I think that's one of my favorite comments, uh, trend of comments we, see, we tend to see on our YouTube videos, man, and the podcast. Like, it's really cool seeing Mike Perry embrace that father life, man. Mm. You know, you're just growing every day, and we all love to see it. Um, well, so what, what would you say is next? Because we haven't talked publicly like about everything. You, you got on Jake Paul's podcast after that. Yeah. Like, what's next? Because Mike Perry is not fucking done. We all know that. You know? Yeah. What, well, what, do you, what do you think is next? And then the Connor thing happened. I was kind of maybe going to hold that for when T. Wood was around. I mean, because you guys kind of had a similar, you know, you, you get what I mean. Like, the, you both kind of went through that shit. And I, I have a good question for you guys, both of you later. And it's I'll get to that later. But... Well, he did it on another level than I did, you know. He fought him twice, and, um, you know, we all have been waiting to see T. Wood come back. I do have more fights on my bare-knuckle contract. Uh, T. Woodley's been calling out, you know, the likes of Nate Diaz, which I think that could be a good fight, former UFC champion. Um, and, you know, Nate went 10 rounds with Jake. Uh, they both fought him at 185, things like that, but... You know, uh, what's next? I mean, just today, you know, yeah. just take my time just today? and, and I, you know, but people comments on, on stuff like that. I've been, I've been really staying off a little bit of the social media. I've been monitoring it and watching and, and trying to post a little clip here or there, just times, uh, with family, things like that, that I've been doing. And, you know, one of the biggest comments is, um, you know, selling or, you know, somebody sold or, um, you know, this and that. But, you know, you got to look at the, I earned the spot. Uh, they gave me the shot. And, you know, how many fights I've been in that I wasn't sure if I was going to win or not. I still go through with it. A lot I win. Some I didn't. I was on um, a six-fight win streak, which was one of the better ones. I mean, I've had a couple win streaks in my life. And, you know, life goes on. Um, I can still fight. I could still, you know, people are still looking for me in the gym where I can uh, inspire and, and uh, pass along knowledge and things like that. But I myself just, you know, haven't been in there and, and um, I've let my body fully heal. It'll be time to start heading back in there and get some mitts in. I got a couple guys in mind that I'm going to work with and... um you know, I just want to take my time with everything. There's no rush, and but they might want to push something in by the end of the year. Uh, we'll see who wants to make offers, and uh, you know, I've had a lot of thoughts. Like, hey, I'm five and zero oh and bare knuckle, and um, you know, if, in considering the abilities that I've gained through mixed martial arts, the light, uh, the the career path just takes so many turns. Uh, I was an MMA fighter. I was a boxer, uh, a bare knuckle boxer, and and then I, I I jumped back in the boxing ring, and the 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 rules make things so different, you know. And but you know now I gotta be a social media platform and and uh, find ways to interact and speak with fans and and colleagues and you know like you're you're popping up. Uh, you're always at you know, at the fights, karate combat or UFC or 
Oh. I was just at CG, CJI actually too. Is that a that fight? What is that? Yeah. What is this? That was the Craig Jones invitation. Oh yeah, yeah. I heard a lot about yeah. that. It was cool, bro. Yeah. What What was cool about it? Him grappling a big woman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like the atmosphere, dude. It was um, like I just got invited to go and you know just attend and post about it you know see what i thought about it and it was it was really cool like they had like a karate combat style pit and craig jones had grappled in the karate combat pit before so i guess that's probably where they got the idea that they liked it so there's this giant pit this whole stadium unlv stadium and then adcc is going on right down the road that place got packed dude and some of the some of the matches were sick so it was really cool man it was really cool and i'm not a huge bjj guy but it was awesome yeah, I know that their, their the fan base actually. has been leveling up and, and um, really showing up to the events. And uh, they got a couple guys who definitely willing to talk some trash. I mean, those guys who grapple all day long, they'll snap your foot or your arm or your wrist or, or whatever. And, and there's no... They'd be walking around with no necks and you're like, that dude. There's like, no <laughs> impacts, like punching and things like that. Like, I'm, yeah. my grappling is decent as far as MMA grappling goes, like if I can grab you and punch you and, and I use mm -hmm. a punch to, to get the next grab or things like that. Like I can, I got some jujitsu, but straight up jujitsu, that's tough stuff. I mean, Gordon, Gordon Ryan and, and, um, Craig Jones are, are some of the best. I mean, Gordon is levels above everybody else. Craig's a funny ass dude, bro. Yeah. That's Craig's, a little weird sometimes. <laughs> Definitely, bro. Definitely weird. Definitely. But, Super nice but guy. Nice bro, guy though, yeah. I could tell you some stories. Yeah. Um Man, I you know I always come in here. I don't have no fucking plan, but I have so many questions. I got a I got a good one for y'all. So I'll just give this one to you uh right off the bat. And if we got cut anything, Mike, you know I love you, bro. I just want to get like some introspective, is that the right word? <laughs> Answers out of you. Um is there anything you regret about taking the Paul Jake Paul fight? Besides, obviously, you know, like, was it a positive experience overall? Is it something you well, changed? Okay, good question. What's but, the best and worst part? Yeah, go for it. You know, I took the opportunity. Um, yes, sir. I thought I was ready to win it, and um, you know, maybe boxing or whatever was a little different than I expected it to be. I mean, I, considering I'm in the gym, I box. Uh, maybe my sparring partners weren't moving quite the same or uh, things like that. But, you know, being in the fight and I tried to stay in it. Uh, you know, I got up every time I tried to come back and, and I, I wished I had let more punches go. Um, it's just some, you know, it was what it was. It happened the way it happened. Um, you know, the guy beat me straight up. It was... Uh, I had my, I had a chance that I could have won in there somehow. I uh, could have made it dirtier. Uh, could have, shoulda, coulda, woulda. You know. Um, sometimes in life you get an opportunity that maybe you're not gonna win, but sometimes you do win. I mean, I was on a six fight win streak. Some of those fights I wasn't supposed to win, and I won. And you know, people take that away from you. I saw something yesterday about Prince Nassim, the boxer, the one fight apparently mm -hmm. that Super he lost. Fly, I didn't yeah. know he had just lost one fight, but apparently he had lost just one fight against a, uh, I believe Mexican style boxer who, who took his time and, and, um, set up his shots and he used basic fundamentals and they were saying things in the video that, it made it look like Prince, Prince Nassim had never boxed before or he could never had boxed the way that he was looking in that matchup, which is completely crazy because we know that he has some of the greatest highlights out there from a high-level professional boxer. And, you know, as soon as the uh, some of the fans get the chance, they'll try to take it all away from you. But at the end of the day, all that happens in my face is, you know, a lot of respect and, and anybody who, you know, w I was in Dallas and there was this guy, um, in the club, we, we were in the club, we were getting ready to leave and we went downstairs to party by the DJ booth for a little bit. And then there was a couple tables, people were cheering 
And it was fun. And then this other guy was like, oh, man, Mike Perry. And he, like, pushes me. And then I pushed him back. And then he pushes me again. And I pushed him back. And I'm like, okay, here we go. And he, like, it was funny. It was laughing type of matter. But, like, you know, I'm about that shit. So then I want to see how about it you are. And, um, like, I think he got a little closer to me. He was, like, trying to talk to me about taking a picture or whatever. And I was like, oh, no, fuck you or whatever. And then uh, he's like, whoa, whoa. And then he, like, went to push me again. And I, like, started headbutting him in his face a little bit. Like, okay, bitch, this is where we're going. Yeah. And then security, like, grabs him and was moving him. I was like, no, he's good, bro. It's all right. Don't worry about it. He's good. But they wouldn't let him go. And then we just, we walked past him and we had left at that time. You know, as... I can't be doing that shit for free or whatever. And people want to mess with me. People seem to know me and shit. But um, I'm just out here trying to live my life and have a good time. And other people didn't take those risks or those chances. They didn't sacrifice years in the gym, day in and day out, grappling, wrestling, punching with guys, bleeding, uh, sweating, and, you know, crying over spilt milk and shit. So... I took my opportunity, and I wish I had done better. And, um, you know, there will there will come a time that I'll have to earn another one, and I'll have to get in the gym, and I'll have to train hard, and, and I'll have my chance, and, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. What would you say to the people? Well, I got two things. <clears throat> like, throwing fights and everything, because there, there's always comments like that when there's a Jake Paul fight. Like, what would you say to fans that say, I've always thought throwing fights is, it's obvious when it happens, or it's not so obvious, but it's never, I could get into my whole, what would you say to people who think every fucking fight that doesn't go well, their man. way or the way they thought it was going to go is fake? Hey, bro, like, you know, hell yeah, I wish I threw that shit. <laughs> I wish that shit was a set up, bitch. I got beat up. Like, that shit, I, I set that shit up. Hell yeah. I wish that shit was a setup, bro. I got beat and, you know, and I thought I was getting to somewhere I could be greater, but, uh, it feels good, you know, just shit. I had a six fight win streak built up and, mm -hmm. um, you know, it was, I don't know. It was how people were hanging on to my coattails and now, you know, a lot of them let go and, um, the ones that didn't, you know, are very noticeable and we're all in this different space in life. It's like the next chapter. It's like season two, you know, it's like the next, Yeah. Uh, it's a fresh start and then there's still things to build and I look forward to the challenges ahead. Season two is the new Testament. Let's go. The second whoa, book. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> hey, bro. Hey, bro. I saw okay, a video oh, of Jesus battling Go Goku. And it, he, <laughs> hey, Jesus was fire, bro. He had putting move. it on him. He had the moves on him. <laughs> he was. Uh, what, what, where'd you see this? Instagram. You know, that's where I see stuff. Oh, Instagram, yeah. That's, that's what uh, you you see. I need to do ass. more studying. I need to do more, like, knowledgeable things. Maybe I'll read a book. Uh, you know. I don't know what makes you what, better. If you were, if you walked into a bookstore, what's the first section Mike Perry goes to? Shit, fine man. Like, what? Where are you looking for? Finance. Yeah, they they say ten minutes, Mike. You get a pick your free book. Which where you go look first? Finance, dude. Finance, okay. Somewhere in there or AI. You know, you just ask Chat GPT any question, and you'll get. Yes, the, they write me. You'll a get book right about to the right to it first. Oh, my wife earlier was like screenshot your instagram and then ask chat gpt to roast you in one paragraph roast your instagram in one paragraph and she posted gotcha. hers and it thought like she was me it like responded to her it's like either family or fighting and like like what is this even about or like something like that and then she posted mine it was like a nice roast both of them were like nice roasts you gotta try. What'd you it. say? Okay. Oh, I don't have it Reach on this. Your IG. Uh, my Instagram doesn't show me that much. I'd have to ha like have it judge me off Twitter, which it would probably not like me very much. 
Um, our guest. What would you say? Our guest. Uh, Wait, go ahead. Uh, sent me a text. Said he might be a couple oh, okay. minutes behind today, but you know it's all good. We get the the former UFC welterweight champion up in here today. We got some facts about the champ that I want to break down real quick. I know he's not here just yet, but I think some of these are really good. And if people never knew, and you know, Tyron is always somebody that I've been chasing uh, as far as. You know, his legacy and things like that, things that you can look up to and be proud of. He has a lot of those. And um, one time I went to an to a seminar of his here in Orlando area at a American Top Team gym. And, uh, you know, I was just an aspiring guy. Like at the time I might have been. I don't know if I had any pro fights or maybe I had one or two. I had some amateurs. I knocked some people out in the state of Florida and people knew who I was and. I went to this seminar and told him, you know, I'm, I'm coming for your belt. I want this. I want that. And he's always shown me such kindness and such respect over that aspect. And, and you know, I'm very grateful. I mean, I've gotten to meet his mother. And and Tyron is like a uh, long, you know, like a long lost brother or, or someone that I've looked up to, you know. And um, he's always showed he was there on fight week. He gave me, you know, he. uh you know, seeing him and, and after his fights with Jake and, and he wanted to root for me and he wanted to, you know, just like a lot of the community did. I mean, that arena was insane with the love that they showed uh, for me and the disrespect that they they showed Jake. The, I think they got a good fight, if I, I have to say so. I watched the fight and, yes, I got hurt at times and I took a lot and it, it was a good a good fight in my opinion to watch it was fun but some facts about tyron woodley if you don't know um you know tyron the woodley, fight was a the fight was great by the way Mike. thank you man. Like, I, I mean appreciate that. It, like my girlfriend's sister fucking called and asked how to order it they were screaming over speakerphone while we were watching i mean dude it was still enjoyable as fuck man still love you let's hear those questions it's good to hear man tyron woodley facts uh, he made his professional MMA debut in 2009. He is a former UFC welterweight champion who defended his title four times. Mm -hmm. Woodley also com competed in Strike Force and was an NCAA Division I collegiate wrestler for the Missouri Tigers, becoming a two-time All-American and Big 12 Conference champion. Um, in high school, he was a two sport athlete, American football and amateur wrestling. And, um, he has also ventured into the world of acting and broadcasting. I mean, the guys, you know, he's one of the inspirations of young MMA fighter athletes everywhere. And as far as his career has gone and what it has led him into and, um, you know, he's even coming on today to show me a thing or two about how we can continue to level up and, and uh, keep living this platinum lifestyle, you know. So really look forward to speaking with him. And I told him I can't wait to talk about uh, some of the combat sports fights that are happening soon, like Max Holloway versus Ilya Taporia yeah. and uh, Sugar Sean O'Malley versus Marab Davalishvili. You know, just to name a couple. So, dude, at CJI, <clears throat> we're sitting there. Uh, like, they took us all front row. We're sitting right there. I'm like watching this BJJ stuff. I'm like, hell yeah, this is dope. And then you hear the crowd screaming, and you see this dude jump over like the VIP section and run up like into the crowd. And my girlfriend's all, what the fuck? And so she's all recording it. And I'm looking up there. I'm like, bro, that's fucking Marab. Like, Marab oh, yeah. jumped over the VI. Someone, like, threw something at him. I went oh, back to yeah. the production room and asked, like, Craig Jones himself and, like, uh, my homie. I was like, dude, what happened? What They didn't know what happened, but that dude, Marab, got up there, went in that fucker's face, and they pulled him off. He went right back down. It was fucking crazy. Marab is... Marab's crazy. Sorry, but that was funny as shit. Because oh, I was yeah. like, is that fucking Marab, <laughs> dude, up there in this dude's yeah. face like this, like, about to beat his ass? That dude just sat there like... Mm. 
It was pretty funny to watch. Saw, but yeah, that fight's going to be bad. I saw some of the stuff with Dana White talking about him uh, because he got cut and he posted it. And they were like, don't ever post that stuff. And um, and then apparently he posted like him taking out his stitches. Cutting it out with scissors. <laughs> he said he had garden shears. And, you know, they add a little <laughs> drama to it. I mean, I, I can't get any... Um, any respect for those things? I've been doing that stuff out here. I mean, sometimes, but you just don't share. It's all hearsay. You can't look at it that way. A lot of people do show, you know, love. I'm grateful to all the fans, and and uh, the haters can suck it, dude. Well, that takes me. <laughs> that takes me to a, another quick question. So then, what would you say? And I just want to, you know, this for the fans. They can hear it straight from you. What would you say to the fans? Like, how big was his, uh, you know, Jake was obviously big, like a very, a lot bigger than I even thought he'd be. But, like, how much did his size play into it? Because I've seen a lot of people saying, you know, you're not getting as much hate as some other guys that have lost to him have, you know. And a lot of it, I see a lot of, he was just too big, different weight classes. What do you have to say about that? Would you agree? Would you say, no, nah, it's an excuse? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it. He cut to get to the 200. Uh, maybe yeah. he was 212, 215. In the fight, I was probably 194. You know, I didn't eat as much on fight day as I did. You know, to make weight, I drank like seven glasses of water before I weighed in at 196.6. Um, just to add a little bit of weight to me. And, uh, you know, we talked with Josh uh, with ice bags before the fight happened. He's like, I don't think you need to go up and wait. And then I tried anyways. Like, I just got, I tried to get myself to a comfortable balance of just eating and working out a couple times a day. And and you find yourself, you know, sometimes in fighting you get tired sometimes. But I've been tired for the past three years. Since I've been winning all these fights, I've been tired. I'm like, damn, I'm tired of this shit, tired of working out twice a day. I'm tired of this, tired of that for the past three years. And it was the same old story. And I thought I was going to be able to walk him down, take some punches from him and try to put that punishment on him and wasn't able to. Um, you know, I thought I put some size on. I put on like four pounds and I looked beefy, but my my bulk as far as arms and chest is more of a natural, um, you know, and Jake, Jake had cut down, he'd gotten the miles in, um, you know, I can't really say it was anything unfair. It's like what they used to say about Floyd Mayweather. If he, if he made a boxing contract with you and you were signed to fight him, if you look in the fine print of that contract, all the details involved pretty much says, that he's going to win. I mean, it's a science project. These guys know all the details, all the formulas, and they put it all in and, and they make, you know, boxers, they make them make weight at a certain weight. And like Gervonta and Ryan Garcia, he's like, why would I not put in a weight clause of him going up back to what, 150 or this or that? And I mean, that's fighting. You shouldn't sometimes sometimes you should test yourself but i guess it's gervonta you know he's in a position where he would never have to take a risk like that and and that's you know maybe you have to see those things coming you have to see those risks and be like you know what it's hard for a man to say you know what these aren't adding up in my favor and i just think that we should take more time and and this and that and and those were things I thought about too. Like if I, if I had more time, if we could push the fight, the Mike Tyson fight had already gotten pushed. Sometimes it, you're always thinking about those things, and I just I had to take a risk and I had to take a chance, and and I was getting a chance that a lot of people won't get, and a lot of people did believe in me, and as soon as I gotten beat. You know, a lot of people jumped off, and that's perfectly fine. Like, I don't want you here anyways. I don't want your support if you're um, just flaking it anyways. So, you know, there's still a lot of a lot that I can bring to combat sports, mixed martial arts, and, and um, 
you know, I'll just take it a, a moment at a time and see what that is. Hell yeah. Well, I mean, you did a side quest, dude. And yeah, it was a big side quest, but you just went on a side quest. The main quest is still there. You know, your your win streak, your just wrath of violence you've put on in BKFC. You know, man. Uh, I mean, I won a title in my life, and I'm pretty proud of it now that I can see. I mean, to, uh, shout out to Eddie Alvarez, man, you ugly bastard. He he <laughs> uh, he gave me a good fight in bare knuckle. We fought for a belt, King of Violence belt, and I feel a little more, you know, like greatness out of that belt now that I had the opportunity and I won that and it was a bare knuckle thing and and Eddie was a big competitor as far as he had won three world titles in three organizations UFC Bellator and uh won championships and you know I mean, he was those things as a champion. And, yes, we all take it away from him because we watch Connor pick him apart. I mean, it is what it is. But he gave me a good fight, and I ended up the winner. So I can be proud of that moment and say that I did that. Hell, yeah. You know. What well, well, so are you going to compete for? The uh, I need to start streaming, game streaming, something like that. But that will take time, too. We could do that, man. Yeah, right? I downloaded Call of Duty finally. I just fucking dog oh shit. Yeah, I'm so bad. Like, I'm good at, like, bro. No, you're I good. I have my moment. I, I, I can that hide. Time. Yeah. <laughs> I can hide. I'm a good, like, creeper. I'm a good bodyguard, bro. I'll snipe a little bit, but I don't, I've been playing. What the fuck have I been playing? Uh, mostly baseball, bro. Like, yeah, I'm so boring. I don't know. I need to get into Call of Duty. We should try that, dude. We could do a podcast while we while we play some games. That'd be fucking hilarious. Uh, what? Is that what you've been playing, Call of Duty? Still? Uh, Are you looking at your stats right now? No, I was looking. I was looking at Riverside. Was telling me something. I thought I did, but I think I did. I don't think Jazz stepped in to tell me that there would be an issue. Um, it says something, but no, my. No, I'm terrible, man. I it I'm good when I could play with like a couple people that are good. So you're a good support. Yeah, I'll give them like I'll hide and give them twenty, thirty seconds <laughs> where they can come back in. I'll try to get my team medic and you know. I'm the wild card. I'll be you guys will be like, Oh fuck, they got five guys in there and I'll just strap up C four, run in there and take care of it. <laughs> Am I a suicide bomber? <laughs> am I saying that? I don't know what I am, dude, but I'm a good good bodyguard on there. Oh, Human body bag. Human, yeah, whatever. Um, what shows? You still on the Love Island? Well, or whatever you they were ha- oh, that's right. There was a reunion. The reunion wasn't as good as the show was as far, but there's apparently another episode of the reunion. I have to watch the second half of it. Um but no, I, I haven't been on any shows. I haven't been on much. We've been, we've been, um, I've been drinking a little bit. I'm actually done drinking right now because I got so messed up. You got hammered? Yeah, I did get a little drunk, uh, p- probably more than once. So, yeah. trying to work on that. Yeah, gotta, gotta get back gotta healthy. Me and my bro. wife were like, oh, we're gonna stop doing the fast food right now. Mm. Dude, it's bullshit, though. Like, I'm a, you know, I have a girlfriend, but I, I don't have no kids, nothing like that. I'm not married. <clears throat> and I never really, you know, I make enough money. Like, I never really, like, pay attention to, like, gas price. I never drive by and go, oh, Jesus Christ. Like, I just kind of go about my day, and everything works out. I'm stupid. But um, even me, I've gotten to a point, I'm like, what the fuck, dude? I used to be able to cook, like, a meal for, like, five people for, like, 20 bucks. Have a couple homies over, have like good, like a good solid meal. And now it's like, I can't spend less than 60 fucking bucks. You go to like McDonald's, it's like 30. How the fuck has this happened, Mike? And I know you don't have, you're not like, you're like, bitch, I'm balling. I don't give a fuck. You're doing it for health reasons. I'm I'm doing it for both. No, I'm not. It's fucking crazy. There's lots of future to look at that I need to find different ways to make the bag. And nothing Real comes estate. like that fight bag. And uh, yep. apparently, you know, I put a damper on that fight bag for now. So, yeah, 
Just trying what do to you think? Out. Like, how do you think you get back? Like, what in your mind? Because everyone's gonna have their own opinion. Like, I don't think you lost a ton of steam at all. Because I think it was like I said, like a side quest. He didn't step into your world. Like the MMA fans, combat sports fans that'll pay and be watching BKFC and not just the people that'll watch uh, Jake Paul fights. I don't think you lost a lot of steam at all. I think you get back in there and like one fight and bare knuckle, you remind everybody exactly who the fuck you are. You know, or I don't, wanna, you I don't really do care to remind anybody. They, you know, the ones yeah. who seem to forgot. You know, y'all must have forgot. Y'all can kiss my butt. I really don't care. Uh, I've proven myself time and time again. I mean, I was undefeated the last three years, and it, it's like, um, you know, it, <laughs> I was going to give an analogy. Let, let me say. Do, do it. I so, love analogies. If you're taking a sobriety test with, you know, okay. and, you know, they just they just test you until you fail, until you stumble. It's like, mm-hmm. why even take the test? There's nothing to pass from it. You know what I mean? The, well, don't don't drink and drive, kids. Like we, we've been on that. You know, I'm getting, I'm getting older. I'm big dad mode these days, and uh, <laughs> you know, we're all about safety and family vacations, things like that. Just making it, enjoying it, and getting back home safe. That's what things are about. So, like, you know. If imagine you're taking a sobriety test and and you, you know you have a few th- things to worry about that you have had a drink or two and and I'm not speaking from experience here I'm not but uh, say you're doing it and it's like they're just they're holding this light in your face and it's been like 20 minutes and you've been doing this test and that test and you stood on one foot and then your other foot, you know, you're an MMA fighter. You've been kicking people and maybe your shin bone, your ankle's not that good. And you got it. They're like, stand on the other foot. And I'm like, yo, my ankle's not that good on this foot. And you stumble and they're like, oh, you're going to jail. Well, I'm not taking the test. I I get the analogy. I'm taking, I, I refuse the test. Yeah, just take me, put me in the drunk tank for the night. You can think I'm in. I need to be in the drunk tank. That's fine. I'm not taking your test. I'm not doing none of this, none of that. Um, but you know, I like that analogy. Thanks. Good man, because you know, call an Uber, call a Lyft. <laughs> don't drive. You don't. You said okay. This is a random, but we could use this story. So I don't know why. I have no idea. Well. I bought Red Stripe today to drink. I don't know, just on a whim, I saw it. But it was the first beer I ever got drunk on. Do you remember the first time, or first time I ever got drunk, period? It was in Jamaica when I was like 14. But do you, do we have a Mike Perry first time he got drunk and what was it story? Ooh. Yeah, I was like 15. I was in Lapeer. Nice. Uh, I was at a college party and uh, all these. <laughs> Uh, it was so. Oh my god, dude! Uh oh, uh oh. So it was winter time, and there was a lake in the backyard, and it was frozen over. And you know, I got pretty lit. I remember, like, cause I remember seeing we were playing waterfall, where I was drinking a beer or whatever. And as the card goes, like if your card's higher or not higher or whatever it was, you drink. And then, and then I see this big chubby guy drinking a bottle of vodka like it's water and i'm like i can do that and i'm fucking drinking this vodka i'm like 15 bro i don't I had no idea this is my first time really drinking and um and i remember waking up in the bathroom and these girls were peeing in the bathroom i was waking up and i like i was like what the heck is going on and these girls was like I don't know what they say. Go back to sleep. I don't know. And then, and then, so I got up and I went outside and I, I fell down in the snow. I just was hot. You know what I mean? I was like throwing up. So I was yeah. hot. And I laid down in the snow and then people were coming to get me out of the snow. And there's a truck on the fucking frozen lake driving and it breaks through the ice. Oh, shit. And it was my pops. 
he was driving this old busted truck, and then so we call his. Was it, wait, was he at the party too, or yeah. was he just out on the lake yeah, driving no, around? He was at the party. Okay. So we call we call the, his boy, and he gets his truck down there, and they strap these things in to a tow, and he's smacking his Dodge Ram up against the tree, driving, pulling this S10 out of the out of the frozen lake. He pulls the truck out. My dad dried his truck off for a couple of days with like a jet heater while I was, uh-huh. you know, recovering, recovering. and uh, <laughs> didn't want to eat or drink nothing the next day because I was sick. I was like, oh, my God, I can't eat. I can't drink. And then that only made it worse. I mean, you have a stomach ache after drinking. You got to you got to have some juice and some. A little bit of juice and like a little bit of sandwich or something. Something you gotta have. That's your hangover cure. You gotta have something. You can't not have like, something. Okay, I mean, I mean this seriously. I've only in my life had one, maybe two hangovers. Like I didn't drink in high school. I was like a stoner. I was like one of the stoner, like snowboarder and skater kids or whatever the fuck. And then baseball. But like I, I'd go to a party. They had me a beer. I'd babysit that shit forever. But the first time I got drunk was in Jamaica. My girlfriend, my my life's been weird. I ran away when I was like 13 or whatever, blah, blah, blah. This family, my girlfriend that I had met from a different school, her family was like super rich. They took me in. So I lived with them for a long time. Like they bought me my first Xbox, all this shit. So they were going to go on this cruise. And I'm actually on the uh, National Geographic channel in the documentary about it was the biggest cruise ship in the world at the time. So we go on this fucking cruise, and one of the places we went was Jamaica. And again, I'm 14. We go looking for food or something when we're walking around after, a, I don't remember what the fuck we were doing, like some boat tour. And then we go to this Japanese restaurant or something they had there, and her dad goes, yeah, get whatever you want to drink. And he points at the beers, too. And I was like, what do you mean? Because, you know, when you're a kid, you want to try that shit. So I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, there's no drinking age here. And I'm like, what? So I drank like five, six of these bitches, bro. And I was tanked. And I just remember riding back in a taxi because they couldn't get me to walk back to the fucking ship. And then like I was sick for like a day after. That was my first time. Nothing crazy. It was just, I guess, the location. Yeah, location. Yeah, I mean, I that was cool. My dad wasn't ripping around the, like fucking icebergs in his S10. No, you were in Mexico, cool, though. Bro. That was cool. Jamaica. Jamaica. We'll Jamaica right. first, but. Jamaica's actually dope. Anyway, my stories aren't as fun as yours, That's but I wanted true, to hear man. that. That's not true. And just your dad ripping around on the ice. Why? Is that just a normal thing you guys do out there? No, I don't know what the hell he was doing. <laughs> we got to have that Mike Perry and his dad episode. Get some stories about young Mike Perry. No, I don't like that motherfucker. You don't like him at all? Not in a while, no. I thought you said you were down to do it. No. No, I was cool. I was cool with him, and then um, he's a little hater, so. Well, elaborate on that as much as you're willing to. Why is he a hater? Does he give you, like, fighting tips and shit? I, uh, I mean, I guess. Yeah, he tried, but he's just a... Um, I don't even know if if he's my dad sometimes. I think my uncle is my dad. I don't know. <laughs> Dude. I look more like my uncle, bro. It's fact. Dude, I, I've had thoughts like that before. Bro, I seen a funny-ass tweet the other day, and it's true. I've always kind of thought it. You know the boys? Yeah. Like the show The Boys yeah, on yeah. Amazon? They said that you I ever heard like you look Billy like Billy Butcher. What do you and think? And then when his powers finally came out, he has some whack-ass powers, but he got that... That thing that come out of his chest. I don't know. I haven't watched the boys. I only uh, watched like the first. The couple last episodes. couple episodes, the new episodes and shit. He finally like uses his powers. Oh shit! So would you recommend that one? Yeah, finishing it. Like I like the show. The show is really good. It's, uh, there's a lot going on. A lot of weird stuff, and it's like something to watch for sure. I recently got so my girlfriend like hates anything with like swords and shields like lord of the rings or you know like game of thrones uh-huh. like she said is weird uh-huh. and i'm always like it's not fucking weird everyone watches this show then everyone's weird but i finally got her to watch game of thrones i don't even know why i think she just finally gave in and wanted to watch it so we're watching that right now but next we'll do boys shout out to khaleesi 
Shout out to Lisi, 100%. <laughs> yeah, Queen of Fire. Fire. Uh, fuck, I had another question. Dude, you're supposed to keep it rolling until Tyron gets here, but I was going to ask, how much does he follow UFC nowadays, do you know? Like, he's pretty, he still follows it, I would it, like right? to ask him, you know, anything that we could about himself. Uh, let's see if he got back. Oh, he did him. Ready in 10. He said that seven minutes ago, so. All right, so man. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so what about Drickus Duplessis? Bro? Oh. What the fuck? Dude. How'd he do that? Like, out of nowhere, he just landed a couple jumping shots and grabbed Izzy's neck and got the, I mean, good for him, man. That guy, that guy don't give up. No. Not even, like, yeah, what the fuck, bro? And Izzy will be back, like, too, you know? He's just having an unfortunate who, run. Who'd you have for that fight? Shout out to Dan I, Hooker. Dan Hooker won another one. Dude. He's doing great. That dude's on fire, bro. He got well, who did you have in the Drickus Adesanya fight before? It? Dude, he went insane with that. Uh, who'd you have, Drickus or Adesanya beforehand? I wasn't sure. I really wasn't sure. I mean, I figured since Drickus beat Strickland, I was. I thought Izzy might, you know, but I. You can't count Drickus out. He he seems to have like a freakish strength. And he's built very well, like, like he takes hits, like he doesn't care, and and he throws wild, and he seems very like loose, very like yeah. agile. So, you know, I really don't know who I had. I thought maybe Izzy, but um, Drake has definitely showed up, and and the fight changed just like that, like he, yeah. It was a close fight, and then Drikas just won. It was over. Right after Izzy did this. And, like, I don't even think he was being cocky necessarily. I mean, it was just, like, the way it, it turned out. I don't remember if that punch that hit him or if he stepped on his foot that kind of made him stumble when he said, like, bring it on, then immediately got finished. But, yeah, dude, it's so weird with Drikas. Beforehand, I was thinking, for, like, the whole lead-up to it, I was like, I really like Drikas. Obviously, we had him on here. He's a really nice guy, cool guy. Uh, really like Izzy, but I was like, Izzy is probably going to put on a striking masterclass against him. You know, you look at the Sean Strickland fight, and Strickland's so modus operandi, or meta, meta is what I'm trying to say, his own meta, but you get what I mean. Like, he's so basic in what he does, and Adesanya struggled with that. We saw DDP get through that. We saw him go through Rob. Like, what the... Robert Whitaker, like, what yeah. the fuck? So I was getting closer and closer to the fight thinking, Izzy is going to be able to piece him up when he's doing that diving in overhand shit. Like, he's going to get clipped by Izzy. But then it, closer to the fight, fight day, I'm like, dude, but DDP keeps showing us. Because I thought Whitaker was going to be a wash. Like, he was going to beat the shit out of DDP. I don't know, bro. He's definitely special. What do you think about the way he moves around and looks tired? Is he, is he goosing? Is he fucking playing possum a little bit? Or is it just the way he moves awkwardly? It's a good question. I mean, I I don't know. I like, uh, I, there was a time I, I wrote down on my paper for Bruce Buffer to announce, like, my fighting style. And I put, uh -huh. I put drunken boxer. And, like, he was, like, reading it on my debut. He's like, this man is a, is a boxer. He didn't put the drunk in. <laughs> drunk. Yeah, dude. he's a drunk For boxer. Real. I mean, if you've ever seen the uh, Jackie Chan movies, drunk and boxing is fire. Y'all got to check those out. Classics. But I don't know, man. DDP's the champ. And hmm. I mean, it is what it is. He, he's uh, continuing his reign and no one can chug a beer quite like him. I'm close. You're close. But he's I'm still close. the champ. I think I could take him. Ah, man, I could take him, though. And we need to do it. We need to figure it out. We're talking. Maybe I slam one at the end of this episode, and we, we make it a clip. I was thinking we'll about ADP Black recently. I was like, man, I'm going to text Abe. I, I've been seeing some, like, tough guys on Slap, bro, like the ones who win sometimes. Do you follow it? Do you no, watch it? No, I don't, but, like, it popped up. You just watch the highlights? It popped up on yeah. IG sometimes. I'm like, I'm going to watch this guy slap or get slapped and see how he takes a hit. I wonder what... You know, 
I wonder how much Paige Van Zant got paid to do the slap, and I wonder how much I could get paid. Mike Perry, dude. Right. <laughs> I kind of okay. So can I have a? So drink we can't first? rule out. Dude, would they have to let you have at me least? have a shot of tequila? That'd be dude. Craig Jones walking out to his fucking event was drinking fucking. He even took a shot as he was entering the pit before he grappled Gabby Garcia. Those are the that's the chill environment. That's the next we need level, I guess, when you're just grappling every day. I don't grapple uh, anymore. Just once in a blue moon. I don't blame you. Do you feel like that's harder on your body? Like, do you get more injuries striking, or do you just get? No, cuts man. And... Combat sports in general, man. Sometimes, you know, you have a good day. Sometimes, most of the time, it sucks. Hard. Yeah, I should have. I should have well, stayed in school. Kind of I should have did my you. numbers in my <laughs> calculus and should have fucking found artificial intelligence. Got a got a programming Fuck's degree. Cool. Mike, one thing I know we're the same on is we were not we were not built for school and college and all that. We figured our lives out. I think we did a good job. You did it better, but I think you did just fine, brother. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Whatever. What's the first question you're gonna ask T Wood? What's up, bro? Yeah, of course. What's yeah. going on, man? That. How's your mom? I want to see you two chat. Yeah, dude, Mama Woodley is literally a fucking legend. I want to know how she's doing. She 100%. Is, man. She's a nice woman. She reads. When out. did you meet her? I think I met her, man, when he. I may have met her officially when uh, he was facing off at the Fifth Street Boxing Gym in Miami with uh, Jake Paul. I was there live, and they were doing a face off and stuff like that, and I met Mama Woodley. And she's just like they describe, right? Because she is a hero amongst the MMA community. Amen. She is. Oh. Amen. Damn, my back kind of hurts, man. My little setup, I got to do. Dude, watch. Stretch for a I second because I can go stretch. piss real quick. It's been too long. Stretch. I'm going to go piss and stretch. Right. That's fine. I'll be right back. Two seconds. Well, we might have to scrub this episode. T. Wood won't come on. Wood won't come on. Uh, or maybe he's trying to come on right now. Well, he texted me and he said, ready in 10. I'll tell them emails in your inbox. We don't have to do it. We can call. I don't know. We can call it a wash, I guess. Hold on. Just give me a minute. We made an attempt. Well, no matter what, this is a good podcast, dude. I've been waiting to hear all this stuff from you as well. I think it's good because, you know, that one you did right after the fight, you know, you've let – there's been more time to marinate and, you know. I, I think you said some really good stuff, Mike. Yeah. And more than more than anything, people want to hear how you're doing. What's next, and what's going on with you? No, they don't. A bunch of rude. No, it's a lot of support. Nope. It's not fair because I think about the rude ones. I just wish that they were there in my face so I could do something about it. But they don't Time do it to come, my face. Right? Nope. You know, I'm gonna go back to the gym, and there's gonna be guys who want to learn something that day, and um, there's gonna be guys that I'll I'll spar again and i'll have all these incredible abilities and um you know possibly was a wash as far as my career goes but as far as setting my family yeah. up and things like that i've gotten a pretty good head start and i fought like hell for it i went on a six fight win streak i made you all believe that i could do it and i thought i could too and fucking you know we just keep going back the same Loop de loop, but it's totally fine. Like props to Jake Paul, man, he did a good job. And if there was, it, like you saw when I dumped him on his head, like what if it was MMA? What if it was <laughs> PFL? You know what I mean? What if it, 
You were just bare knuckle. But, you know, they took me out of a sport that I was so good at for so long, and you know, I don't know. It sounds to me, man, and I'm not speaking for you, but you know, like. Dude, I don't think you lost as much. Like, I don't think you lost much of anything, honestly, dude. Like, you still proved it. And I haven't seen, you didn't get memed to hell like Tyrone Woodley. Like, remember when Tyrone, after he lost, after he got knocked out the second fight, he did that. Um, but look, though, Super he, for he made me. it to a second fight. He had a second fight. And in the first fight, he hurt him. And, you know, yeah, I looked but then at the second like one. That, he, but other people, the fans who would never fight nobody, they love a, you know, bunch of. Bunch of slobber knockers. Well, I mean, dude, I just I think there's a bunch of people that still support the shit out of you and think you you were in your element because you've always been a boxer. But there was also late notice. You know, there was just a there's a whole bunch of shit. Like you said, no, it, here's an analogy for me. You know, when you're you know, when you're uh, with the boys playing fucking Call of Duty last game, one more game. Because you're either chasing that one dub or you're on a win streak and you don't want it to end. But it finally ends and it's like, fuck this game. Fuck this game because you were on such a long streak. You put it down for a day, and then the hunger comes back. You're like, dude, let's get up another. Do you think you're just finally having some downtime, man? Some downtime to just be a dad. You don't have to do two a days. Like, is the hunger gonna come back? Because you don't sound as hungry as usually Mike Perry sounds. He's ready to get back in there. I need to crush faces. That was all like that was all me. Like, I knew I was getting. I was trying to get to that event, like that point. And the thing is, I don't have to lie anymore. It was all like, Mm -hmm. you know, I I say it's lying. Sometimes it's manifesting. Sometimes you got to say it to believe it. Right. And like I was leaving myself as, you know, I'm undefeated here and there. And um, I've been... I'm I'm unstoppable and I'm this and I'm that and I'm the king of violence and I'm this and I'm you know and and bare knuckles hard and it is and like it, there is something different about it and it, you know it's unfortunate that I was so successful in bare knuckle and wasn't able to move to boxing and have um similar success and you know but history goes to show you know, I was already 0-1 in pro boxing, now 0-2, and, and I'm kind of interested, like, I would like other fights in boxing, like, you know, Anthony Pettis beat Roy Jones Jr., and, and uh, Nate Diaz's guy just beat Chris Avila. Chris Avila just, you know, he's got a couple wins in boxing, and... and um he just beat I would Pettis, like to yeah. try that yeah that's the thing right he beat Pettis and and I'm like I would like to try you know I want to fight again I want to box again and um but it has to make sense and and uh especially considering all the numbers behind it you know I built myself up in a career of having these hard fights and I just fought 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 and then I took my time and I had some wins and um I tried to build myself up to something you know and fucking hey oh, Mike look at your house look at your family look at everything you've accomplished dude you have won yeah, yeah, you yeah, did yeah, win and it's not over no no it's not like I don't even shit it was hard keeping up it was hard, yeah. and I mean, dude, think of a fucking S10. You got your fucking RPMs going into the red for fucking three years. Take a breather, dude. It could be good, man. Like, and you've been taking one for like, because the whole time we've been doing this podcast, it's all all right. I gotta go train. Six weeks. Just got back from training. Been, yeah, it's been six weeks. Damn. So, yeah. So my rib technically just healed, and I, I still. For the fans that don't know, what happened to your rib? Well, you know, Jake popped that bitch. Um, the first punch, I guess, you know, I probably had a little bit of a suffrage, uh, from sparring and training before the fight. Um, but like, it was nothing crazy. And I just happened to have my hands up and he popped me in the rib and, but I fought him for six rounds like that. And it, I don't know, I think it affected my punch count. 
I hate that it it always goes back to this, but that's where I'm at in my life. And for some reason, there's a reason that I'm here, and um, I'm I'm either trying to take it and find something else uh, that I can bring value. Obviously, we got Dirty Boxing Championships coming up. Um, we're we're doing auditions for that, and we're gonna be having some fighters clips and and uh, things like that that I'm looking forward to seeing, and I want to see these guys. And, and it's a totally new rule set. Like Dirty Boxing Championship is it's it's like a street fight, but we we keep the action at a fast pace with without the kicks and without the grappling um, aspect as far as like holding on the ground and things like that. But, you know, there will be ground and pound. There's boxing and elbows and there's dirty boxing fighting in the clinch. I think that's going to be really exciting. And I'm, uh, we're, we're getting to the point, like we're going to start receiving these videos and, and clips and auditions of people who want to come fight for us. And we're going to put on a card, uh, here in the next couple months. Dude, fuck yeah. <clears throat> See, you got a bunch of shit going on still. And I like you're I know Mike, I fucking if I know you at all, I know it's gonna come back. It's gonna creep in there, bro. And you're gonna get back this. All right, let's end this fucking podcast. I gotta go smash faces at the gym, bro. You just I don't know. You you have no idea how inspiring you are to a lot of gentlemen out there. And I think it'll show, especially like with this podcast we're doing here, just updating on where you've been, how, you know, how you're feeling, what's next. You'll see the support in this, dude. You have a massive following. And it's not because of the fights you lost. It's because of the fights. It's because of all the fights, dude. Like you said yourself, that was a banger fight, whether you won it or not. I think you if know, people you knew who I really was, room. like when I'm working out and shit, like the fact that I made it this far, bro, and I said... You know whose fault it really is? Anybody I ever beat. All these motherfuckers I beat. That, how bad do they suck, man? Because I'm <laughs> terrible. I must be so damn no. terrible. And, and I must could never have been able to fight at all. And I beat some of no. these guys that y'all thought could fight. And look, it, look how much you think you could fight. You can't fight at all, bro, if you're talking about me and you can't fight at all. No one has seen videos or clips of you and you can't fight at all. It's crazy. I can't even There's fight. There's Mike Perry, I know. <laughs> I can't fight at all. So leave me alone. If y'all knew who I was when I be training, I be, I be complaining the whole time. I be going slow. I be the last one. I be, that we all went for a run. I be the last one coming in sometimes. I'd be like, fuck it, man. I slowed down. I took I took a little walk, a little breather. <laughs> Hell yeah, bro. That's yeah. how you really supposed to train. Fuck all that hard trying shit. Uh, hard work. What, I'm just good uh, at this shit. What's, what's his name say? Um, trying shit. Hard work, trying dedication? Shit. No, uh, Cat Williams. He'd be like, trying shit, trying shit. Trying oh, yeah, shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying shit, trying shit. <laughs> Keep on trying shit, trying shit. You just keep trying shit. That's all I did. This guy keep trying shit. Barely Dude. trying. And my boy said he got it, but I don't know when. I don't think he's coming. I mean, we can get him on whenever, bro. I mean, I'm, I'm around. Uh, one more question for you while we're waiting. Who do you have, uh, Sean or Marab? Man, you know, O'Malley is... is been pretty fantastic, I guess. And, uh, yep. you know, they understand what Marab wants to do. Uh, Sean is really good at poking, striking, and, and keeping it moving and using his feet. Um, he's built really an empire for himself and he's been able to keep it going and he has a good attitude. Like he, he holds a strong attitude. He's done really well. I think, I think, Sean is going to give Marab a lot of issues and especially considering like, you know, like when Dana got on Marab's case about the cut and, uh, you know, that, that kind of backfired on him releasing that he thought it would 
get them attention, but it's like it's it's negative attention and and then he had the the spat with the fan. And it's like when you see people in the news like that before their big event, it's it's interesting. But then it's like can O'Malley win it on the Mexican Independence Day card when he you know, I've I've tried to fight UFC a few times with the Mexican shorts. I think I got one win with the Mexican shorts, and then I lost a couple, uh, you know, because my wife is Mexican and my, my kids have that Mexican blood. And, and O'Malley is very similar where he has a Mexican daughter. And, um, you know, it's... And they're on top of the Mexican Independence Day card, which is supposed to be all yeah. about, you know, pro-Mexico fighter. Brought to you by Saudi Arabia. Yeah, it's all interesting. Um, interesting. Yeah. yeah, you know, that guy That guy from Turkey is, has been, um, who holds hands with Dana and stuff. Oh, yeah. He, you know, he, he said that me and the Jake Paul fight wasn't boxing, which isn't fair. You know, like I built up, I had some real fights and I fought hard, but these guys that are rich and uh, never, you know, really fought for anything, they just it, offer it, money and then they can treat us fighter slaves however they treat, however they want to. You know, that's fair. That's whatever. You know, I, I've been saying I'm just a slave to the game. Well, you're creating avenues to get out. I broke you know, out. Uh, I definitely did break you out. You broke out. I fucking did. And it was, you know, it was what it was. You had to do what you had to do. And I built, you had to build yourself up. That's the thing is I built myself up. As much as I might suck or you might think I can't fucking fight, bitch. I built my record. I fucking was undefeated. And I made it and got the opportunity for a big fight. And, you know, it wasn't. It wasn't my first money fight, and it won't be my last. No, it won't. Thank you for coming on. You know, um, folks, you know, Tyron has has been a big supporter of mine when when he never had to be and things like that. Like, he he looked out in ways like he's looking out right now. By just uh, because he's he's a mogul, he's a big big time social media uh, face, and you know a a TV broadcaster. He's in in the news on all the all the uh, big connecting networks, and and uh, for him to give us some time, man, and and help guide me uh, further into towards success you know i'm grateful to have him today here's tyron woodley folks how you doing bro what's up my g how you doing brother you know it's all amen up. man uh make sure you tell mama woodley mm -hmm. i said hello yes she's always i just dropped off mama woodley some wish i threw in there right before i came here so i dropped off some food and some smoke and uh and i slid back through hell so, yeah um you know, I, I want to share something off the top, and this will make a lot of sense to your fans on why I'm so hardcore Mike Perry all the time. Um, a lot of people get real quick with the Twitter fingers. A lot of people will say a lot of shit, but they'll never say it to your face. I was doing a wrestling camp in Orlando, Florida, and um, at the time, I think I just got the belt. I'm, I may not even have the belt, or I just got the belt or something like that at that point. And um, I was coming out of for American Top Team, and um, I was doing this big um, seminar for um, Wade Rome, Ricardo Laborio, Dean Thomas. And then this kid came up to me, and he was like, hey, my name Mike Perry. I'm the one that's been talking shit about you on the Internet. And he was like, but I'm going to take your seminar today. So I looked at him, and it's like, you got to respect a motherfucker that's willing to come up to you and say, hey, I'm that nigga that's been talking shit to you on the internet. <laughs> I'm the one, I'm the face behind that, right? But today, I'm going to humble myself and I'm going to learn some technique. So not only did he stay for the entire two-hour seminar, right? I said, fuck it. Well, I might as well use somebody that kind of understand fighting a little bit more. So we started demonstrating, doing moves. And that was my first time ever meeting him. And to be honest, um, 
there's not a lot of guys in the UFC I really gravitate towards. I really fuck with. I really don't hang with a lot of fighters. I don't watch a lot of fighting because it's so fake. Everybody does what they think that we did to make money. So I'm really looking at offspring. Like Usman is a clone of me. He's doing everything that he thought I needed to do. He was at all my after parties. I, I sent him all texts on how to who he should fight, how to market him. Same, same thing with Kobe. Same, like literally, it's all a game to me because behind the scenes, that's what I did. But I always respected Mike from that day forward. We had a uh, like an inside joke. He always would hit me like. I fuck with you, but I'm coming for your belt. <laughs> so I would send him like a, I would send him like a Louis belt. I would send him like a Gucci belt. And then it was just random. Like I was in Puerto Rico one time. Out of all the times and places, yeah. and boom, Perry on the same on the same fucking trip. He's like, "What you doing? Let's go fly these fucking drones and chill out, right?" So it's just like, he's always respecting me, and and people call him crazy, but you gotta be crazy in this sport. And I'm really proud of you, my dog. I feel like bare knuckle boxing, you really meant for that shit. Nobody can ever say shit about a world champion in bare knuckle boxing. It is the closest to the purest form of fighting that you can ever get. Anything that, that has a glove or a padding on there is a replica of that. You built different. Um, I did my street fighting when I was gang banging when I was younger. I don't I don't desire to bare knuckle box. And I'm I'm a man enough to admit it. When I look at the punches and the blows and the things that you guys do in the bare knuckle boxing, I personally prefer not to do that. A lot of people thought they wanted to do that. Ask Luke Rocco, <laughs> ask Eddie Alvarez, ask MVP. Now, these dudes are champions and studs of their own realm, but I think you've really found a sport that you really live for. When a motherfucker hits you, it pisses you off, it invigorates you, it makes you want to punch at them harder. And I'm just glad for you. I'm glad for your family. I'm glad to see you winning, and I'm glad to see you really getting the exposure that you need. And me and you still got something. I got something that we talked about five years ago, and now it's about to pop off in a big way, and I'm still, I still got you included. With. That, that's my long-winded way of why I fuck with Mike Perry, because in a, in a room full of fakes, it's real easy to find the realest one. So that's my brand, um, Real Recognized Real. Proud of you, brother. Um, anything you need from me, you Yo, already know what it is. I, that was sick. Yeah, man. that was fucking incredible, bro. I appreciate you so yeah. much. I appreciate you realizing, you know, I definitely did. I had to put in a lot of work just to cover, you know, try to try to get closer and close the gap between us. And, um, you know, it, it got me to a high spot, you know, being inspired by you and, and looking up to you and, and seeing you at the time since you was champion and um, seeing how humble you were and are still. I mean, you your humility has taken you so far in the game as far as fights and uh, broadcasting. And, you know, you, I mean, speaking of which, I've been waiting to see you return, and I know that you were talking to, calling out Nate Diaz, and I thought that that would be a pretty great matchup. So, what are your thoughts on that? On creating that fight? And I, I'm, I'm, I'm a. Since it's you, like everybody else, I give a, the blase ass responses to, <laughs> and I don't feel like I feel like if it's not my platform or somebody I really fuck with, I don't really give. I don't really give them the fly on the wall information. I don't give them the inside stories. Okay. So when I was in the UFC, the um, Hunter and Dana hit me up and they said, hey, we want you to fight Nate. I said, nigga, let's do it. <laughs> right. So at this time, I had a torn labrum. I, I tore my labrum on the first uppercut I threw against Damian Mike. He shot first shot. The first takedown of the whole fight. I lifted this shit up. Boom. Blacked his eye. Tore my whole shoulder out. So I fought that whole fight with a torn labrum. He he tried to take me down 23 times, didn't get none, right? So now I said, okay, I think I'm going to get this surgery, right? So basically they asked me to fight Nate. I'm like, Nate a little light in the ass. He ain't got no power. He ain't going to hurt me. He ain't going to take me down. It's going to be a striking match. And I know I had to deal with the, the labor. I'm going to throw straight punches at him, and I'm going to get this big win. Then I'm going to get surgery, right? So then... Dana hit me afterwards. I went on Fox and I was like, shit, if I got to bet my house, I'm banking. I'm fighting Nate next. Cause in my mind, they asked me to fight him. 
and I know how the A and B and all the C and D, whatever the fuck they do on the side, if they asked me, they would have had to ask him first, yeah. right? They would have never asked me first. So in my mind, they're waiting on to see if I'm in. So after I had this conversation in the hotel, I go on the set and Fox and I get on the air and everybody's like, who are you fighting next? I'm like, shit. If it's up to me, I'm going to say I'm fighting um, Nate, right? So now Dana went on, oh, well, if he's if he's bed in his house, then that means he's homeless. He's not fighting Nate. Da, da, da. I'm like, why the fuck would you make me look stupid on air when you just asked mm-hmm. me for this to fight this dude, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So then I was so mad, but I recognized I don't mm-hmm. own the UFC. This is their promotion. They do what the fuck they want to do. I'm thankful and I'm blessed that I can go out there and show I'm the best. So then... I couldn't beat his ass, but I surely went into the studio and made a song called I Beat Your Ass. Mm-hmm. So when I made that song, I Beat Your Ass, the story behind that song, it oh. was really for Dana because I wanted uh, to beat his ass. What? Because, Tito or T's so point, you 2.0. To, yeah, when you listen to the words, it said, I'll beat your head to the oh white meat. God. Knock out all your white teeth, right? Oh. So I wrote that song because that was my way of expressing myself because at that time when I try to speak on it, Fox would cut at me. They, they cut my microphone. They told me, you can't speak on this. Because after he made that, I was prepared to go back to work and defend my motherfucking self. Because you got me fucked up. You told me to fight this dude. And they're like, no, we want you to fight RDA. I said, RDA is going to do nothing but wrestle. Did you not see him fight Anthony Pettis? He's going to be walking like the fucking Terminator trying to take me down. He's not going to try to stand up. If it's that fight, let me get surgery first. Because I'm not going to fight him with a torn labor room. It don't matter what you think. Ain't none of y'all fighters. Ain't none of y'all bust a grape in a fruit fight. Don't tell me what the fuck to do. I'm a world-class athlete in many different sports, right? So so long story short, I had to chop that one up. But I did do that song called I Beat Your Ass, which you dropped the fire-ass verse for. And um, I, got a, I got a pretty Shout decent weight from that. So at the Shout end of the day, yeah, so, so Nate and I have already kind of been – talked about fighting on several times behind the scenes. Nate got a great manager. I fuck with Zach. He, he's a super duper businessman. He understands the big picture. And um, I, I thought Nate and I boxing would make a lot of sense. Or to be honest, I really kind of want to fight Nick. Nick was the original OG. Yeah. yeah. You know I mean, he fight Luke, which is not a great fight That's for him. Crazy. Luke is, um, you know what I mean? It's a tough fight, but I, but I feel like, at that point, I feel like I'm not going to keep pumping up people. Like, okay, I, I'll give you your props, Mike, because cause I, I see where you come from, and you've been you've been clawing at this shit, scratching, clawing, biting at it, right? But I'm not going to just keep matchmaking other motherfuckers right. up. So I was like, no, nah, I'm going to fight that motherfucker. Right, right that's that's who I want to fight it. So I'm down for fights like that, man. I'm, I'm not down for these last three-week Notice fights to build somebody else's name up. A motherfucker asked me to. You seen a heavyweight dude that fought two motherfuckers at one time? Three six five. Three six five pounds. Motherfuckers asked me to fight this dude on three weeks' notice in Ireland in MMA. <sighs> Wait. So for clarity, when you say you want to fight like Nate or Nick, um, what where would it be? Boxing or? Oh, uh, I'm. To be honest, I ain't did MMA in some years because I ain't really fought in some years. I took some time off, and then um, I had some guys bitch out. I was supposed to fight Floyd mm-hmm. in June. It was never supposed to be Gotti. That fight was me originally. Really? Damn. Um, I was supposed to fight KSI in January last year. He flaked out and took Dylan Dennis, right? And, you know, shit, I, I got offered to fight you, Mike. I'm pretty sure you got offered to fight me. What? Um, I, on, on, yeah, somebody offered News to him. To, you know that? No. Nah, but that's what I said. I said, I'm not fighting my dog for no fucking peanuts. If we was going to fight for real, we would have fought in the UFC. And that's a hard-ass fight. He at the top of the game. And if I fight him, it's a six-figure payday. I'm not fighting him for six. six I'm not. It's a seven-figure payday. I'm not fighting right. him for six figures. And that's something that me and him would have to talk about and negotiate. And I said the same thing with Floyd. So when Floyd came and brought the fight to me, I said, is, is you bringing it to me or somebody else? Because I turned down the fight against you three times to other people. And and his his dude um uh, P Rilla, uh, P Rilla was like, no, nah, it's from Champ. I said, all right, well then, and then it's up. Let's do it. What we doing? What we wearing? What we fighting at? What day? And then we got down to the money, and then they just kind of started moonwalking mm-hmm. a little bit. So I'm just tired of the cap. That's why I created my own promotion, the Realist International Promotion. I control my destiny. I control when I fight. I control what I make. 
And I'm willing to fight for other promotions. I'm not willing to sign a long deal. I'm doing one-offs only. And um, that's kind of what you have to do because it's so many people that give a fuck what people think so much these days and they want to look so tough and they want to look so cool until it's time to be tough, right? You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, um, I just don't have time to get my hopes up. Like me and Manny Pacquiao have been negotiating the fight for a year. Damn. One year. Fuck. And MGM Grand said yes. <laughs> they said yes to a, a, a very handsome ass purse. He wanted to be greedy. Motherfucker, this ain't no damn Floyd. This ain't nobody in your weight class. The reason this fight makes sense is because you got 60 fights and you fucking going to be like a beehive cracked open, throwing a million punches, and I'm taller, stronger, and probably can knock you out, right? Now it's an interesting fight. Let's go and get paid. And if you want to do it again, we already had to negotiate where we can do it twice. So why are you playing games? So I don't, I don't. I don't want to hear nobody mouth until they got a contract ready. Yo, that's some serious BTS gems right there. Like everything. Right. Like I told y'all I was gonna give you the real. Fifteen minutes yeah. of gold, dude. Yeah, I got your back because it's like this. Like people need to. I'm quiet because I understand that speaking the truth comes off as complaining. That's that when I went quiet to MMA, just be quiet because nobody want to hear the truth when you start speaking the truth. Like you ever seen a fighter? that always got a million belts, all every belt they ever had, and they always, well, I want this. I was undisputed in this division. When you got to keep doing your resume out to motherfuckers, everybody's, oh, you get the all oh, look, right? When you just a cold, silent motherfucker, and every time you do something that's viral, every time I've trailblazed everything. You know what I mean? No matter what anybody say, I was the first that stepped out on every plane and decided that this parachute may or may not fucking open up. So if I go out there and I fail or take a lesson, I don't care because you you scary ass motherfuckers have never even jumped out the plane, right? I was on a boxing shit before it even became cool. Go look at a picture of me and Adrian Broner, fake facing off. That was when I was, I wasn't even a champion of UFC yet. I had a my strike force contract to box. Damn. Scott Coker allowed me the, the 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 exemption to box. So this was like already premeditated. The Jake thing came because I was cornering Ben, but I never really was I never really was screaming and yelling to fight Jake. I didn't even really I knew him because he was a fan and his brother was a fan and I just been in the same circles with him a couple of times, but I didn't really know him, know him like that. I didn't follow his world that way to see how he big he was in that world. So when that came I was like, shit, I'll do it. They came to me right. with that. I wasn't like, I was on the internet begging fucking for I a I was Jake saying fight. to my boy Mac here earlier how they try, you know, the fan base or whatever comments on the internet, they try to take everything away from anybody as soon as they get the chance. Like, for three years, I was winning. I was on a six-fight win streak. And, you know, I talked my shit every time. Uh, it's kind of like, oh... You know, I'm either going to win or I'm not. And if I don't, then it's I. It's not because of what I said, because I've been doing this this way. And I was telling them how I, I heard yesterday that, like, Prince Nassim had really lost only one boxing match. And the one that he lost, they were saying things about him like, oh, he had never boxed before or, or this or that. But we all know Prince Nassim has got one of the most incredible highlight reels that's out there. And as soon as people get a chance to talk about you or discredit you, see, that's the thing with you is like you've got the credentials and and you were the champion here and the champion there and you fought this person and that person and you've had you've had some knockdowns and then climbed back up to the complete top again. I mean, you took a chance against Nate Marquardt and then became the UFC, one of the greatest UFC welterweight champions of all time mm -hmm. in the same category as George St. Pierre. And then, you know, it, it made me look at my belt. The one that I did win against an Eddie Alvarez in bare knuckle boxing, the king of violence title, you know, and it, it just allowed me to finally be proud of that thing because I wasn't proud of it before. I thought I had to just keep going, just keep going, just keep going. And I've, I finally had these things that I could look at and be like, I did scratch and bite tooth and nail for this shit. And, you know, it's just unfortunate. But these fans that had never 
They never step out their house to do a mile, let alone the six miles that we ran multiple times a week in, in preparation to fight someone. I mean, the thing you got to think about is this. This is this is my two things I check off. Am I feeding you? Am I fucking you? <laughs> if I'm not, I don't give a fuck what you got to say about me, right? Because you never you never going to say, oh, look at Apple for shit. <laughs> You would never say it to my face, right? And why am I like when you when you when you think about what you can control, right? That's wisdom. God said with all things get an understanding, which is wisdom. Let's quit thinking. Thinking what this person is thinking, or they think this about me, da 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 da. That's our we already think certain things about ourselves that we're uncertain about, right? Let's get certain. One thing I know is that these kids on the other side of this door, they're looking for me to make sure they got opportunities, to make sure they eat something for dinner tonight to make sure they got some fly gear for they for, for school, make sure they can go and play mm-hmm. soccer, right? So I care what they think about me. I care what anybody that is a significant person in my life, whether it's a significant other, a mother, a sibling, somebody that's so close to my circle that when I was down, they was there. When I'm up, they're there. No matter which way this equalizer go, they, they alone the ride, right? So what I do is I become my own filter. What I want to post, I post. Like somebody, somebody, one of my friends posted a third strap, right? And I was like, all right, third strap accepted, right? Just joking with her, right? And then she was like, oh, I think I'm going to take it down. I said, why? I said, I don't take shit down. Everything I post, I think about it before mm-hmm. I post it. And I don't give a fuck about what people say afterwards. Then I leave it there. I let, if, if it looks, if my grid or my social media, it sticks out like a sore thumb, the quality of the video is bad or, you know what I mean? I ain't really on that no more. But at the time of post, I become my own filter and I use my, how does this go into the big picture of what I want to do? So I'm thankful to hear that you have already allowed yourself to be proud of yourself. Like, you know what I mean? Today I was talking to my mom and I was just like, I got a gym in my crib and my nephews and my, my nephews stay with me and my sons. And I'm like, I've been trying to train them a little bit. But I don't know nothing. And I had to stop. I'm like, motherfucker, I'm one of the best fighters who ever, ever fight, mm-hmm. ever in the history of this sport. And if you if you too, if you don't understand that you have a blessing that somebody is in this house and willing to show you how to not just fight, but to defend yourself and how to think the way I thought about fighting is what made me special. Not a fucking right hand or not the fact that I was athletic or black. I had an extra calf muscle. The way I thought about it the way I broke it down, the way I understood very clearly who I was and my strengths and my weaknesses and how a motherfucker that fought me may think that I'm going to fight and how his game plan may be to beat me. So now I got a reverse game plan to beat him. And that's why I left everybody hanging. Robbie thought I was going to over-wrestle him, then he got out brawl by a brawler. Teal thought I was going to do the same thing, and he got out struck. Wonder Boy, one of the best strikers ever, got out struck, mm-hmm. right? I'll point fight it, right? So when I beat everybody in their best round because they expected me to run away from their round. Yeah, Condon too. They told some dude, um, what's his name? Uh, it was a reporter. It's my dog now. But he called me and was like, oh, well, you know, Carlos Condon is impossible to knock out. So what are your plans in this fight? I said, don't you ever disrespect me. Anybody asking you fucking knocked out. And I was beating Condit around a fucking ring. It looked like a ratchet from a stunt was being snatched out of his back, right? And I was just always trying to prove everybody wrong. But the thing that God kind of got me to a point now is prove me right. Prove your loved ones right. Prove yourself right. It's only 10. You ain't got more than 10 people that's really heavy duty all day one with you. You do not have more than 10 people that are day one. I promise you. Right. And if you do, you need to go and look at that circle and carve some of them leeches off. Right. You got at most 10 and I don't have. 10. Yeah, that's high. You may have seven. Yeah, ten's high. Yeah. I may have seven. So at the end of the day, those seven people that have been with me, they know me. They know what I'm doing. They know who I am in the inside. And they also know what I have to do to get it done. We Like, let's be real. We all kind of in a clout world right now a clout chasing world right now we got to do a little bit if i say okay me let's look up mike we have this event da, 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 da. it's like oh that's his dog they're affiliated they're associated right he on what he on 
and it's or if somebody pay you to make a post mm-hmm. or where they shit, mm-hmm. you're you're getting paid for a a package of clout you distributed mm-hmm. for them, right? So you know who I am. So if you see me doing a little bit to to put these motherfucking um these Jordans on my son's feet and some diapers on my daughter's ass, you really know who I really am, right? But we're in that world where this is unfortunately what a three point mm-hmm. line is at. I'm not gonna step in front and get two. I'm behind this line and I gotta get three. You know what I mean? Because I see niggas dropping threes around me, and I'm not gonna ever be watching people eat around me and let you pay me anything less. That's what that's what me and the UFC butted heads occasionally because they were just intrigued on how I knew everybody's numbers. I know your numbers, I knew Connor's numbers, I knew everybody's numbers. So when it came to the table, you're not finna pay me less than Cowboy Cerrone. You got me fucked up. He ain't never touched gold. He never will. You're not paying me less than him. Not happening. I smoke Robbie. He didn't land one punch on me. Uh, yeah. One. I, no, your resume. So, your so resume. He, and he was on a tear. Yeah. 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 But 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 I came to the table like that, and it was sometimes I was a little bit too rah rah because I don't. Tr- I'm a str- I'm a street baby. I don't trust people. I grew up in the street. My mom is a gangster. I'm not a gangster. I didn't have to be. I went the other route. But my family is gangsters. My mother is a gangster, right? I'm the only one in my bloodline that got it legitimately. I'm the first one that went to college. I'm the first one that did something professionally as a sport, an athlete. And I opened up a different mindset for different things that we can do. So I'm a trailblazer. Mm. I don't have to think gangster. I don't have to be trying to be tough. To like, If I wanted to do that, it was in my house. Yeah. You know what I mean? Bro. How much does how much does it mean to you to set that example for your family that you know, like you you went out and I mean, did it a different way? I'm writing this song right now as we speak. It said, "I show my people it's possible, murder all obstacles." That's my whole be- reason for being here to show my kids, my family, my people. My people ain't just black either. My people, anybody that's faced with adversity, they got a chance to quit, and they make a choice not to. Love right, that. cancer. DV, anything, right? So that's my whole reason for being alive. So I feel like as long as I'm doing that, I'm living in purpose. You know what I mean? Amen. Y'all, all the listeners, man, this one got to go viral here. T. Woodley is dropping knowledge. I mean, he's one of the smartest guys I've ever had the pleasure of speaking with. And he's just dropping the gems once again. And and he's and he's trying to help a brother out, like for real, for real. He's he's helping me out, and I'm gonna go back and watch this just to hear it again because there's a lot yeah. of. Be proud of yourself, man. You 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 know I know your story. A lot of people don't know your story. And it ain't for me to tell your story. Yeah. My dog, you know this ain't the first time he tried to put hey. me on. My dog was out in Las Vegas yeah. doing a concert. He was on stage. And he said, yo, Mike, come up on stage. And, like, I just sat in the back like a little <laughs> shy boy. And I missed my opportunity. I could have went out there and been right front row stage with him and, like, been been cussing people out, you know. And and since since getting with T. Wood, I got to meet, because of him, I got to meet uh, J-Rob the Chief, who ended up making a song about me. That's my me. dog. And, and – Platinum, yeah, I got the track. chance to go Y'all on crazy stage. On that walk, I, I got the chance to go on stage with J. Rob, and because of you giving me that first opportunity, I made sure that I livened it up doing it with J. Rob. So yeah. you know, you just got to take go. those chances, man. T. Woodley, man, shout out to you, bro. Uh, may God continue blessing you and everything that you're doing. And um, I really look forward to seeing you fight again. I mean, speaking of fights. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the fight game. We want to get your takes on a couple of picks. Uh, right. Well, and also to preface okay. that, you at the beginning said you don't pay too much attention. Like, or is that what you said, right? You, like, you don't watch it too avidly? This is, this, 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 is, this is where I'm at. If I know a fighter and I know something about him, I'm going to tell you exactly what I think. Mm-hmm. And Like, when I do my shows, I don't get no notes. They just tell me on air live because they want my organic reaction. Yeah. If I don't know about a fighter, I don't speak on yeah. it. I don't say he's going to win or lose, and I'll tell you. So y'all can shoot me the names of the guys, and if I know them, I'll tell you what I think. If I don't, I'll be honest with Hell you. Hell yeah. Go ahead, man. All right. So the motherfuckers always got something to say about a motherfucker. <laughs> so I don't even know which one of these fights is happening first. 
Uh, I got you on so, that. So, uh, Max Holloway versus Ilya Teporia. Um, and I'm going Max Holloway because he's an OG. He's a, he a thug. He's old school. I spent some time with him in Hawaii. Um, the, I love a person that's never supposed to make it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You like that. I'm like that. He like that. And then when it comes down to the scrapping, we all was like that when we needed to be. Uh, I'm going with Max Holloway. I, he's the last of my mm. class, you know what I mean, of OGs. I would love to see him back on top. I know um, Ilya is um, – he, he's being carved with the new genre. And, you know, he he worked with the same guys that we was working with for a while, so they're big on him. But um, I like Max, I fucking like Max. Yeah, yeah, I like that. And um, and and his last performance was incredible, to say the least. It's, Especially yeah. against Gaethje, dude. Though. What yeah. the fuck? So and then <laughs> and then also, motherfucker, do like that to me. I'm going like this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's, he's got crazy. that conceal, so y'all watch out. Don't be messing. Uh, yeah. And then also, <laughs> I wanted to ask about uh, what do you think about Sugar Sean O'Malley versus Marab Davalishvili? Um, I saw Marab when I was doing another podcast, and he was just to me. It's like so much entertainment now. I I got to before I even look at the fight, I'm looking at the personality. You got one person that's doing everything to to be the star that he's supposed to be in O'Malley. Then you got Marab, who's like really standing in the backseat to the funk master and waiting his turn patiently. And I told him, I said, it's not talking shit. If you think you're the best and you think you can beat him and you don't say it to me, I don't want to watch you fight. So you need to start speaking. So I kind of like gave him a little game on how to find his brand, be honest to who you are and say it with your own filter, right? Um, Fighting wise, um, it's a very even fight, I think, just because O'Malley's very long mm. and crispy and really he kind of a sniper with his shots, right? He knows how to play the mental warfare. Marab has to get super duper close. And once again, when you talk talking about IQ, Sean knows that he has to get close. So I'm pretty confident he's gonna have a good game plan to keep him away from um being close distance. So I would say a slight edge to Sean potentially, but I'm not surprised if um, Marab wins. I like for the for the division to be shaken up a little bit because sometimes we get hand fed the star. Oh, oh my gosh, this is your star now. Everybody, he's the star, right? We seen it with Izzy out of Sangra. I really don't fuck with Izzy. I don't. I don't he's fake. He was New Zealand, and all of a sudden now he Wakanda. You like, like, like. He's. I don't like guys that are fake. No, no, these dudes. I'm no, being real. Course. Izzy. And Usman are conveniently African. He is the you are the realist. They were never brother. African. You are the realist. Yeah. I mean, I mean, think about this. And until I beat Usman, mm-hmm. right? They didn't think Usman was gonna lose to me. Nobody did. It was an ultimate fighter show and I was talking shit about the other black zillions versus ATT, and it was kind of like a joking thing. He's at all my after parties, asking me how does it feel to get the belt wrapped around me. I told him, you know, because I did think he was going to be a champion. He'll tell you. I said, you know, you'll get the belt one day, and you'll see how it feels for yourself. I never thought it was going to be against me. He just called me when I was I was playing bad seeds in the ground, dude. I was playing flesh seeds in the ground. And no matter how hard I was training, I had to live up to that. I wasn't living a good life. I was I was a great father. I was training my ass off. I hadn't lost a round in I don't know how many years. I was a shitty husband. And I was literally just doing thinking it was separate. It wasn't. He caught me in that mix. I was going through divorce. I had a girlfriend. I had a kid. I had all kind of shit. And I wasn't, I don't even remember the fight. Never watched it again. Only day I can tell you, I was like, oh, this is this motherfucker beat me. Right? So after he beat me, they didn't raise up Usman. They raised up Africa. It was Usman, Sadiq, Yusuf, Israel Adesanya, Francis Ngannou together. They didn't do that to Connor. They raised up Connor. Connor went to go grab his little, little peons and his little minions, right? They didn't do that. So when you think about it, Usman was Marty from Nebraska. He hated that, but he didn't. He wasn't Kamara Usman, proud of his heritage in college. He went by Marty, right? And uh, what's the name? Was an anime crumping dancing dude from New Zealand. 
They never spoke about their African heritage. They never were so proud of it. Um, Francis Ngannou was, mm -hmm. for sure, and so was Sadiq Yusuf. But then when it became convenient, then they raised up the mm -hmm. whole continent. I thought that was corny. You know what I mean? And anybody that would go in there and kiss ass in the office was getting the checks and they was getting what they needed to get, right? And that's, I just, I just always love that I can look in the mirror and know I never kissed a pinky ring, never bent over, never took a, some shit that didn't benefit me. And sometimes I got in trouble for it, but I never, not one time, Dana can never say I've kissed a pinky ring, ever. You know what I mean? And those guys did it weekly. So for me, I don't. I just can't fuck with nobody. Like I mean, that. the game gets a lot of it, it gets a lot of dirt behind closed doors. Uh, they're doing things. They're pumping certain aspects of certain things. Certain fighters they pump, and other fighters they dump. And you know, they'll they'll leave a guy in who's on a seven fight losing streak, and they'll get rid of a guy who's on a four fight winning streak. And it's just because it Watch doesn't it. play their cards. I have five UFC titles. Mm -hmm. When I fought Usman, everybody can characteristically say, what the fuck was that? Who Like, that was not tiring, mm -hmm. right? After four defenses and five titles, wouldn't you think a rematch would be warranted? Yep. This was the question okay. I was going to get at, dude. Yep, go ahead. Cody, Cody Garbrandt lost, got knocked out, rematch. Ronda Rousey, rematch. Usman has rematched Kobe twice, Masvidal twice. So when you start looking at all these rematches, they're rematching to give the one person that's willing to do what they want to say, not argue so much about incidentals, money, another opportunity. That that person is easier to deal with, right? At one point in time, Cowboy Cerrone was the easiest to deal with. That's what I literally heard out of the mouth on the reason why they pay him the amount they pay mm -hmm. him because he's the easiest to deal just with. just take it. And I was coined as the hardest to deal with. So in all of the UFC, he's the easiest and I'm the hardest. Why? Because I ask questions, because I know numbers, because I don't trust you. Mm -hmm. If you lie to me once, I have a reason not to trust you. I already come off street mentality. That I don't trust a lot of people. I'm watching everything. I'm watching exits. When I walk into a building, I know how the fuck I'm getting out. I know if somebody come in popping, I know where to hit the deck at, right? I'm seeing people looking at me weird. I'm looking at everything. I don't trust people very often. And when you give me many reasons not to trust you, especially when you give me your word and you renege on it, right? Then, of course, is I'm not wrong for asking questions. They don't like when you ask questions, right? They want you to just, we the UFC, do what the fuck we say, and that's it. And, and, and to be honest, that's where I fucked up at if I ever fucked up because um, it wasn't Tyron FC. It was UFC. And I needed to do what I needed to do to continue to grow, brand, make as much money in, as I could. And then what I want to leave, now I can leave and do my own thing. But I got to buy by their rules. And I didn't do that. But now it's me FC. So I do what the fuck I want to do, when I want to do it, how I want to do it. And that's the play. Well, so I'm going to try to word this. Uh, it, it's like a whole couple things mike knows i'm bad at this i try to word it as short as possible but you've said quite a few things um i i feel like you've been treated unfairly by the fans um you know you like you just said there's only three people that could be argued the best welterweight champs ever gsp kamaro or you you know you didn't even get your fucking kamaro can be because it could kamaro i'll show you i'll screenshot you a text message when kamaro said i know that wasn't you and i want to do it again Ooh. he wanted to rematch me they wouldn't they told me I had to walk on water. Well, so then do you think... They said I would have to walk on water to rematch anybody. What the I would fuck? have to win seven fights in a row and nearly kill people to ever get a title shot. So again. do you think the so, UFC threw you under the bus to promote the, you know, African champs uh, era thing? No, or do no, you no, think no, it's they, the they, fans? They, 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 no, they, they, they didn't understand. One, just just look at it. Uh -huh. Who was the only person that really ever lumped up Izzy out of Sonya? Whoever lumped him up in a fight, Kelvin. Who who's the only Kelvin? What happened Kelvin. with Kel Kelvin? What happened? What, what happened when Kelvin fought me? You won. I danced on his mm. little fat self, and it was a split. If I remember right, that was nothing. dog shit. It was split nothing. I broke my foot in the first round. Right, mm -hmm. he didn't land one punch. I sniped him. I punched him. He was scared of me. He was scared to press me forward. Um, I hit him with so many clean shots. Knocked him back. Knocked him around. He's tough, but he couldn't even think about winning that fight, right? 
And then he still went on to what? Coach the Ultimate Fighter. In the whole fight week, they said if Kelvin beats Tyron, he will fight for a title. Not the winner of this fight. Because it was clear that if I was winning, I wasn't getting the title shot, right? Yeah. But at the end of the day, I feel like the fans only are list. They're not the old school fans that are going to do their research, read the newspaper, um, look it up. Anything that their encyclopedia, which at this point is Joe Rogan and Dana White, what they say is what they that's their law. So at the end of the day, nobody can like throw me under the bus. Like you can look for yourself. People just have chosen not to look. And I really don't care what people say. I haven't. If I tell you the last time I read, I haven't read a YouTube comment in eight years. Um, when I go to my comments on my IG, I look for my dogs that commented because I know they came out of their way to post something. And I try my best to either reply or just like mm. their comment. That's my only only reason I'm in there. Ain't nothing. And those are usually right at the top because I follow them. So I don't even make it to the bullshit. I don't even make it to the tabloids. And I just like I'm really living life. I'm not existing. I'm really living. I'm I'm trying to be more present. Like I'm living. I'm, me and my daughter got a damn cooking show that we building in the kitchen. Hell yeah. Welcome to my restaurant. I'm I'm cooking <laughs> food I ain't never cooked in my damn life. <laughs> Burning shit up man. in the kitchen, right? That's awesome. That that's living life. So like I don't get caught up in what people think. At the end of the day, what I did in this sport, what I did for this sport, how I trailblazed, how I set so many people up to even think something was positive, whether it's acting, whether it was movies, whether it was podcasting, whether it was production, whether it was boxing, whether it was anything, managing. Like, I did so many deals on a napkin, mm. like UFC champions on a, on, a, on a throwaway Snapchat. I did their deals, right? A lot of champions, three champions. Seems fired up. You, you were fucking Seems bugged fired. up laughing. Yeah. No, 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 this is my thing. I'm thankful mm -hmm. as hell for my time in the UFC. Mm -hmm. I talk to Dana occasionally, not a lot. Um, but when I hit him, it's never about fighting. Uh, I'm thankful I had a chance to fight against the best to prove I was one of the best, mm -hmm. right? And anything that I didn't do or get had nothing to do with them. I was the one that was planting bad seeds. I was living this rock star life. I was taking advantage of every party, every entertainment, everything that being a champion got me. I was in it. I was making dumb amount of money. I was freaking, I didn't even, people had owed me money for years and I didn't even know because I was working Fox, UFC Tonight, TMZ. I was doing music. I was doing movies. I was doing Straight TV out of shows. Compton. I was doing podcasts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was fighting and I fought four world title fights in one year. So I was still getting pay-per-view from UFC 205 while I'm walking out to fight this dude. I was still making money. So I wasn't, the devil kind of tricked me that it was different mm -hmm. and it wasn't. So me losing my focus was on me, right? And I can't take that knowledge and go back and change it. I just take it and move forward. But that's wisdom about just being efficient. Now I take what I, if anybody's listening to this, UFC owns a UFC. Mm -hmm. Get in there. Figure out your brand before you get in there. Don't go in there one thing and then change because I'm fucking drill you, right? Figure out your brand before you go in there. Go ham. Fight as many times as you can because you never know when that check going to stop running through, right? Be as healthy as you possibly can, right? And try not to say no to a lot of fights unless you just really got to say no, right? When you get an opportunity, seize that moment. Remember that it is UFC, not yo FC. You better fucking listen to what your manager say and literally understand how to play the game. If you can do that, now you can make a lot. Like, I can always go to any place. I'm a five-time UFC champion. Mm -hmm. I can always do that. I can't act like I hate the UFC because now I can go and say that. The premier brand, I am one of the best ever to do it. I believe I would have beat George. I never got a chance to prove it. I always wanted that fight because mm. I'm like, he can't he can't take me down. He can't outpower me. I'm not scared of that jab. He's not going to hit me with that Superman punch. If he get me down, I'm getting the fuck up. I think I can beat Johnny him. Johnny right? Hendricks almost got, got him, and I think you would have too. Johnny Hendricks already got him, and I would have got Johnny too. Yep. But he missed that weight. And then you smoke well, Robbie. Hey, I got, say I got one for quick question one for time, you, T-Wood. Say it for me one time. Say it for me one time. 
<laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. The man is the goat over there. I'm I'm curious, Tyron. I want to hear. I think it was you sitting next to him. You guys were doing promo for the Robbie fight, and Robbie's always been considered like so stoic, you know, um, and, and intimidating. I guess uh, when they asked him about the Connor fight, and he did that whole viral clip. He didn't intend to, but he said like, "No, oh, I wouldn't take him down," or whatever he said. And he goes, "You know, I'd kill him or I'd choke him out." Man, I'm missing the thing. You were sitting right there, and even the yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But was it in, as intimidating as it came across on uh you went and knocked the guy out, but you get what I'm asking. Was that Yeah, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. And if you look at the UFC like maybe a month ago, mm -hmm. uh, it could be six weeks ago, they spent a whole day and they dedicated the whole snapshot to Robbie Lawler, right? Mm -hmm. What they are doing is they're trying to tell you we're about to put him in the Hall of Fame. Yep. So we're gonna show you all the great things he did. We may not throw Tyron right in here now. We're gonna make this motherfucker away. But we're going to throw Robbie in there real quick. And it's kind of confusing why you would throw him in there and Tyron Knocked him out. annihilated yeah. him and, and literally had more tighter defenses. But he said something real subtle, but it was organic and it was real. It was like, no, nah, I would just do this. It was like, not, I almost kill him, but not kill him. Yeah, right? he was like, I'll take his soul. Um, he said, I'll take his soul. Take his soul. Yeah. Right? yeah. And, um, I would sit next to him. I'm like, well, that's that nigga. You ain't gonna take mine. You can get your ass beat. That's what I was thinking because Robbie and I was dogs, and it was like it's such a sad thing because I really fuck with Robbie heavy. Mm -hmm. My family loved him. My son in this house I'm in right now. My son had like um, a poster for school, like all his favorite athletes. This motherfucker had Robbie <laughs> as his favorite MMA fighter, not his dad, right? I, we love Robbie. Yeah. Every UFC fight, I organically was I was riding for this dude, man, because he brought the first UFC title to the American Top Team. Whether it was me or not, I, you got to learn how to salute and celebrate somebody else without secretly wishing it was you, right? So those um, kind of fights, those Roy McDonald fights, I'm always like, go on my page. I'm with Robbie. You'll see that, right? Yeah. I talk to him. I support him. And it's just a, it's a nature of the game where, like, if if we would have had an opportunity, Mike, and they would have said Mike Perry is the next one to fight for the UFC, UFC title, I would have found honor in that, right? You want to fight people that you fucking respect. You want to fight people that you feel like deserve it. You want to fight people that it's honor in that fight. And, and guys like Robbie and guys like Nick and Nate, they think that you got to hate each other, and they took it personal. So Robbie really got sensitive during that training camp. They wanted me to come to American Top Team and train. I'm like, that's kind of weird, but I'm like, Dan, if you want me to. So I flew out to American Top Team. We trained at different times, and they thought it would be cool for the team, right? Because that was the first ever team versus team UFC title fight, mm -hmm. right? Me and Robbie. First time they ever did it, right? And I told him, I said, the only time I'll do that is in this fight. Because I'm not young. I started MMA at 23, which is a little older, right? So that's the opportunity to give me. I got to take this, Robbie. So I get down there, and they was like, oh, Tyron, videotaping. I want, I don't, if, when I'm playing spades, if you drop your hand, I'm looking over. I want to know that I strategize and I beat you. I don't want to see your cards. See, I'm, I'm trying to look, so I would I'm never looking. videotape. Nah, I take I, I get a boner just from knowing I I I, I I'll strategize you and I and I figured it out. I don't want to fucking watch you on video and cheat. You know what I mean? I had to I had to fucking get um I had to go to the doctor and the doctor was like I'm gonna prescribe you these pills. I said no the fuck you ain't. Oh these are not some some steroid pills for like my fucking um back or some yeah. shit like that. He, I said no. Nah, uh. He said no these not anabolic. I said. When you said that word, I was out, yeah. right? Yeah. So at the end of the day, me and Robbie, like, I haven't spoke to Robbie since that night. Really? That fight. Damn. 2016, we was cool. We was tight. I got pictures of my son with him at American Top Team Gym. You know, man, I was at a lot of his fight when he lost to fucking um, 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 Johnny Hendrick. Me and him had a moment. We was on the same car. I beat um, Condit. He lost to Johnny. It was a close fight. And then you just see us, I just put my arm around him and put his head down. That was my dog. And I just feel real bad that ever since then we have never spoken a word because I respect him so much. And um, he was a fighter of the year back to back. He was a boogeyman to most guys, but I'm he's not the boogeyman to me. You know what I mean? Like where, I, where, I, where I'm from, people 
die for getting their shoes stepped on or, or looking at their girlfriend too long, right? So I'm not scared. I'm not scared of nobody. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, I mean, that yeah, is an ins- incredible insight into, like, serious MMA fan lore. You know, like that clip, hearing what yeah. you were thinking, I've always wondered, what the fuck? Tyron sitting right next to him. I've always wanted to know what the fuck hey, he was shout thinking. Out to, and, shout out to no, Robbie I, I, thought Lawler, it was, I thought it was real. Yeah. One time for Robbie, man. He Shout out to him. Yeah. He like, I, also, I called too. him yeah. out. You know, like I had one of my viral call outs. I was like, everybody want to see me fight Robbie Lawler. And like, it's just a dream. You know, there's a kid trying to come up and it's the fight game. You know, that's how we make it. And it's unfortunate that y'all haven't talked because maybe you will now after this. Hopefully he sees some of this. And, I hope and, so. And yeah, like I it. fuck with Robbie Heavy. Because like, and, and bro, I, I a win is a win. If you're the better Robbie, man like, than me that night, you know, I'm I'm proud of myself and what I've accomplished and I know I can fight. And if I know you can fight too, then we finna have a battle. We're going to battle it out and may the best man yeah. win. And we can even talk a little shit. You got to keep it a little honest in order for the shit to be good. Yeah. And then... You know, it's just unfortunate. Some guys can't, they can't hack. I mean, think about this. Can you beat Robbie fighting a point fight and just pity pat? You got to go. You got to go. go. You got to go. You got to go. You got to He's going to land a big it's no, that, that, it's no 22. Empty the it's clip. It's no 22. You got to go cock, cock. Hey. <laughs> Boom. You got to come right. And if you don't take you him out by that gun. fifth round, he's going to drown yeah. you. The con- the condit fight. No, man. we wasn't doing the fifth no, round. We no, wasn't doing sir. the fifth round. Fifth round no, Robbie we was uh, no different. Round. Yeah. Yeah. Man, we had no plans on fifth round Robbie. We didn't even want to let that motherfucker get a chance to come forward because he numb at that point. He's so punch drunk, he numb, and then he don't care anymore. And I used to be that way in wrestling. I call it the numb phase. I used to get so tired in practice that I couldn't even move, and then I get once I crack over that spot, it's it nothing mattered anymore. Right? Autopilot, almost. and I did it every day. It may took me three minutes a day, eight minutes the next day. I used to get to the point. Ask Michael Chandler, twenty minutes straight, one period match, and I would never stop moving. I would never stop scoring, and nobody could ever stop me from doing it. Nobody. When I say nobody, I mean anybody in the room. If it's Askren, if it's Chandler, if it's anybody. Nobody was stopping me from scoring on you. Hell yeah. So, Respect, so Robbie was that guy one time for Robbie. Yeah. And uh, hopefully one day we can fucking at least shake hands and just, you know what I mean? Even if you don't speak, I love Robbie. Like, like, a, like literally love the dude because I saw he came from being in the UFC. Getting kicked Dana out. Dana told him to leave. Yep. He went to a lead at C. He said, go, you young, go and grow and come back. Mm-hmm. Right. And he did that. He went to Elite XC, went to Strike Force, and he wasn't like he was maybe five hundred yeah. right at one eighty five. Yeah. He dropped down to seventy, came and won on a fucking sprint, got the first title for American top team. His story should be documented. Maybe maybe that's where we can break brands. Maybe he'll let me document his story because I'll treat it right. And I had that motherfucker mm-hmm. crazy. I'm with trap music. I'm telling you, that's a that's amazing <laughs> to hear from you, dude. Like I've yeah. always wondered that, and I that you sat that there and you said, I, "Fuck that! Real. I'm gonna take your soul." That's fucking gangster, bro. That's awesome. Yeah, nah, he meant that shit. Yeah, he did. But he meant that for comedy. Yep. And you're sitting he there thinking, me. "Fucking, you better be thinking about the right one." No, that, no, no. I, I'm like, I, I knew he wasn't talking about yeah. me. That was for Connor, but I knew he meant that about Connor. Uh-huh. And I knew what I was up against, but he also knew what he was up against. That's so fucking dope, dude. I wondered. Yeah, that I used too, to dude. train with Robbie at the Hit Squad when him and Hughes had a gym. Mm-hmm. It was 15 minutes from my house in um, Missouri, Illinois. I used to go over there just to train with Robbie before he was American Top Team. He wasn't ATT yet. Damn. So I used to go over there and train with him and Matt Hughes, right, to help those guys out in wrestling. And he remember what it was. Shit. Well, we can patch this up on this podcast. Robbie, reach out to your boy Tyron, bro. We all want to see it. We love this. Yeah, one time. Yeah, yeah one time. American hey, love for Robbie, man. Never wanted like, nothing to do with me down my there, feeling, bro. My feelings, like, I'm about, can I be real? As a man, my feelings are really hurt on, in real life because I really supported him super heavy. And when he got his opportunity, I was there for him. Yeah. My opportunity, unfortunately, came mm-hmm. on his watch. You know what I mean? And that that's the same reason, that exact reason I'm not a hater on Jake is because I would have did the same shit to that motherfucker if he would have dropped his hands. Yep. And I was trying to, right? So I can't hate on him. I would be just like Robbie was to me. 
So I use that as a lesson. So moving forward, no, I'm not going to extra you know what I mean, be all on this team. Yeah. But if it's something, if I think it's an even fight against you, an even fight against Anderson, an even fight against um, Nate, I'm going to say it. If I don't, I'm going to say it That's the fight is. game, though. Well, I mean, uh, Cowboy Cerrone, yeah. you know, when when I went over to Jackson Wink, like he kind of took me under his wing. And, like, of course, I looked up to him. I was seeing doing things with him and, and got to do some training and he befriended me. And then he, you know, it was all to, to build me up so that he could take that, uh, that rolling train, you know, that thunder and, and then he could find out how to beat me and shut me down in front of thousands or millions watching. And, and that, that was a huge lesson for me in the fight game. And, and I went on a tear after that and and found a lot of myself in the fight game after cowboy Cerrone gave me that very <clears throat> detailed lesson in how the fight game works so kids if you got us you know that i didn't see it that way i remember that fight i didn't see it that way i think i think when you think that's what happens that's not, you don't know that's what he was thinking no we 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 at the no level we can't think no more you think that's what another man was thinking in his mind, which means that if you're thinking for yourself, you already got uncertainty. Ooh. Now you're going to enter his mind and think what his game plan and why he was doing everything. You overthought instead of knowing, right? All you have to do is say, I know I punch harder. I know he needs range and he needs to mm -hmm. get a rhythm. I know he starts slow, right? And I know that if I get close to him and I start punching him hard, he's going to back up. And that's when I need to press forward. Well, I'm that's just saying, like, I feel like in that fight. he, he let, me, that was a submission, he let right? me feel like I got close to him. Like, I got to know him when he always in training possibly held back so much. And, like, maybe there was times that I held back because I wasn't sure what we were doing or how it was supposed to go. And he was more experienced in the fact that he was learning more about me than I was learning about him. And he knew how to keep it that way. And, I mean, he was already a very experienced veteran by the time we were doing that. And I was still very early in my career. so he was And he was known for beating people he had trained with or was friends with. I mean, the fight, like, or they the got game. friendly with them, right? I don't care who trained with me, because you know what? You know how you make a motherfucker cry? You become an onion. You be, have layers. You may see this side of me, but I, I'm a black belt in jujitsu. I'm a Hall of Famer in wrestling. I'm an All American, mm -hmm. first Big Twelve champion in the mm -hmm. school's history. Mm -hmm. I can knock you out. I can brawl with you. I can point fight with you, right? I can bounce up off the ground. I can keep you down. I can submit you. So you got to have these different realms that you can go into. Or at least you gotta have some type of defense to get if your your round mic is close quarters, right? Right? Your style is offline, in close, uppercuts, hooks, elbows, somebody that stands in front of you is gonna be that's 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 a war you're willing to roll the dice on yourself in, right? So if somebody can take you down, now you gotta train so hard on getting the fuck up from bottom that you can get back to being in their face. If they get you on the cage, so many times to get off the cage to get back in their face, just to put you back, the more and more you train those areas, whether it's the ground, whether it's long striking, whether it's escapes, right? You're going to start building a base and a foundation in those categories. So now categories where you would normally call a weakness, they're going to eventually become strengths. When I first started training MMA, I did no wrestling. None. Because you were proficient as fuck at it. Koshek said he does 85% of the training and striking because he's going to take anybody down he needs to, and he's going to stop them from taking them down. He's going to work on a lot of cardio, a lot of striking, and a lot of getting up from the bottom if he happens to slip on the banana peel. Hmm, I listened to that, and I made that my training phase when I first started fighting. You know what I mean? So all my shit was striking, 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 cardio, cardio, cardio. Get the hell up, get the hell up. Striking, 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 cardio, cardio. Get up, get up, right? Now, when they look at your background, they're thinking I'm a wrestler, mm -hmm. right? What happened when you, you you got you got great head motion, you got great foot, you know your angles, right? Um, what happens when you start making guys throw at you first? And when they throw, you slip and you close the gap, mm -hmm. right? Now you're there, right? 
off of a jab, if I come forward, now I'm in there. If I just miss the jab, right, I'm still in the same place. Or if I just get hit with the jab, now I'm giving this dude false confidence. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's 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 the different way I would think about fighting. So Cowboy Cerrone, maybe he did that, maybe he didn't. But the things that you know is you knew you were more powerful. You knew close quarters with just hands. There's no way. Even elbows. He's a Muay Thai guy. With elbows and hands closer, I'm going to put money on mm-hmm. you. If you let him get in the rhythm and you let him get confidence and you let him start rattling off long combinations where he's hoping to clip something in the middle of that, I'm going to give it to Cowboy. If you get on the ground, I'm going to give it to mm-hmm. Cowboy, right? I took so him down. Put yourself in position. <laughs> Fucking... I, and then yeah, I stayed. I, mean, then I, I, stayed. Remember the fight. <laughs> I remember, I remember yeah. the fight. I'm like, what my nigga doing? But Cowboy <laughs> fought me very smart. He was like, he knew he didn't want to get in certain exchanges. Yeah. When I did stuff his takedowns, he he kind of allowed me to like get that takedown even. He like wanted me to do that, you know, and I just didn't see that. He'd done his intel. It sounds like, yeah. He better shit. Shit. <laughs> well, hey, T. Wood, man, we really appreciate your time today, brother. We, uh, it's an honor to have you on, and and uh, absolute pleasure. I love my on, man. On where we go and how we continue to be successful, you know, I think this will be a successful episode for us. So it's gonna be huge, man. Yeah. We get the, you know, we get people on here, and each time after we have these cool chats and everything, and we say this was fantastic. And each time I feel like I'm saying like this one's our best one. Like, dude, you dropped some bangers on this. Tyron always been well, a maybe huge we'll be fan, able dude. to box on a card together soon. There you go. You know that that's a possibility. So yeah, they could better cash us out. <laughs> I hope to see you again. I'll pay for that pay per view. You crazy? Cause you crazy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, my man. Right, I love hey, you. Tell God Mama Woodley you. she's a legend. I know she Give knows it. Time, dude, God man. bless you and your family, Tyron. All right. Pleasure, guys. Well, season two is off on a fantastic start, I'd say, Mike. Uh, we're back, bitches. Uh, follow us on all socials. Tyron Woodley is a fucking goat. Mike Perry still the fucking goat of violence. We're back. We're happy to be back. Are we happy to be back, Mike? Absolutely, man. Get your next listen on the Overdogs podcast. T. Wood dropped some gems today. Was happy to have him and talk to him. Thank you guys for listening. Shout out Mac Malley. Shout out Kim Pye. And uh, shout out Ice Bags. We missed you today, bro. Yeah. No, Bags will be back. I missed him too. Um, Drop a W in the chat. Mike Perry's still the fucking violence god. We'll see you guys in the second episode. We don't have to do the whole, what are we, 31, 32 episode now. We just got number number two now. We're going to number two. With that said... Peace out. Follow us on socials. Blah. This podcast episode was brought to you by Overdog's Bet. Sign up today for early beta access and free play at overdogsbet.com slash beta.